The session is now called to order. Everybody is requested to rise for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Please remain standing for the invocation to be delivered by Congressman Ann Hofer. Take us in hand, Lord, we pray today on the feast of St. John Yonardi, a founder of the College of the Propagation of the Faith. Guide us, Lord, as to the correct way. Never let go of us so we won't stray. At this plenary session, make known your divine direction. Let your word be the underlying substance in all our discussion. Let our uppermost thought always be the plea in Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5, whose cry goes, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. All day long, therefore, Lord, be the way, the path, the truth, be the hope that keeps us going in our work here in Congress. Above the din of all the debate and discussion, let your voice sound in our ear. Let your word echo in our heart. In that way, Lord, we, your stewards, will stray true to you, faithfully glorifying and praising you forever and ever. Also, Lord, receive into your ever-caring bosom your, our dearly beloved colleague, Dina Abad. Amen. The Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we call the roll of members. Directing the Secretary General to call the, order, the, to call the roll of the members present. Call call of members, Honorable Representatives Abaya, Abayon, Abellanosa, Abu, Abueg, Charon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adiong, Advincula, Agarao, Agabao, Aglipay Biliar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Franz, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcilias, Arenas, Atienza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagatsing, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batocabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biazon, Billones, Biron, Bolivia, Bondoc, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maria Vida, Rosas, Bulut Bektang, Cagas, Calderon, Calixto Riviano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Castro Franz, Castro Fred, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serapica, Cerilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Ho, Juanjo, Oliantes, Cortés, Fortuna, Casalan, Crisólogo, Juá, Cuaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesús, 
de Venecia, de Vera, de Pensor, del Mar, del Rosario, de la Somantalia, y más para Abdullah, y más para Muhammad, Duavit, Dorano, Di, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Erigel, Hermita Buhain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ebardoni, Pariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Ferrior, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Fentebella, Garbín, García Gwendolyn, García José Enrique, García Albano, Garín Oscar, Garín Sharon, Gazataya, Gachalian, Gerón, Go Ana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomas, Gonzaga, González Alexandria, González Aurelio Dom, González Fernando, Gorriseta, Gullias, Hernández, Herrera D, Hopper, a los Jos, Javier, Jo, Conjun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lagman, Lanete, Logan, Lasatin, Liachon, Lee, Lim Kai Chong, La Brigat, López Benjar, López Carlo, López Manuel Luis, Loyola, Mojapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangodadato Soharto, Mangodadato Sahid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariño, Marquez, Martínez, Matugas, Meliana, Mendín, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Carlo, Nolasco, Núñez Malañaon, Huaminal, Campo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Vini Nola, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Anotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Remisillas Agabas, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirizato, Ramos, Relámpagos, Revilla, Roapuno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodríguez Isidro, Rodríguez Máximo, Román, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roque Harry, Roque Rogelio, Sagdalan, Sagarbaría, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salón, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento César, Sarmiento Edgar Mary, Sabellano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Suansing Estrelita, Suansing Horacio, Suarez, Si Alvarado, Tan Bunting, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Sherni, Tejada, Tebas, Tianco, Ting, Tinio, Tolentino, Reñas, Tugna, Tupas, Turabinataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Barreta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velarde, Velasco, Velasco Jatera, Veloso, Vergara, Villafuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Violago, Yap Arthur, Yap Velesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Ronaldo, Zarate, Subiri. Mr. Speaker, the roll call shows that 216 members responded to the call. With 216 members responded to the call, the chair declares the quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we approve the journal dated journal number 33, dated Wednesday, October 4, 2017. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Any objection? Here's none. The journal number 33, dated October 4, 2017, is hereby approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, 
I move that we now proceed with the reference of business and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of the bills and resolutions on first reading as well as communications and committee reports. Any objection? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. The Secretary General is directed to read the bills and resolutions on first reading for referral to the appropriate committees. Reference of Business Bills on First Reading House Bill 6506, establishing a POEA satellite office in the city of Tagbilaran, Bohol, Representative Relampagos. To the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. House Bill 6507, establishing an OWA satellite office in the city of Tagbilaran, Bohol, Representative Relampagos. To the, committees on, to the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. House Bill number 6508, 6509, and 6511, converting Various roads in the city of Baguio and province of Pangasinan into national roads. Representatives Go Mark and Pignicia Sagabas. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 6510, creating one additional branch of the RTC in Castilla, Sotsogon. Representative Escudero. To the Committee on Justice. House Bill 6514, rationalizing and consolidating government regulations relating to all games of chance under the PAG Code, Games and Mission Board. PCSO and Special Economic Zones, Representatives Alvarez Pantalion and Bondoc. To the Committee on Games and Amusements. House Bill 6515, naming the Taal Lake Circumferential Road in Batangas Province to Assemblyman Manuel Collantes Road, Representative Collantes. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 6516, increasing the bed capacity of the Martin Marasigan Memorial Hospital in Cuenca, Batangas, from 25 to 80 beds, Representative Collantes. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 6518, declaring Barangay Kisolon to Poblacion Sumilaw across Kulaman River, Canyon to San Roque to Kilabong Down to the Rilig to the Lirig of Manolo Portich, Bolquidnon, a secondary national highway, Representative Acosta Alba. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 6519, creating the OW's sovereign fund, Representative Manalo. To the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. House Bill 6520, increasing the share of cities or municipalities in the tax collected in their area by the national government, Representatives Cueva and Manalo. To the Committee on Ways and Means. Resolution, House Resolution 1358, directing the appropriate House Committee to inquire on the predatory money-making schemes victimizing OFWs, Representative Bertis. To the Committee on Rules. Communications, report of Attorney Cesar Strait Pareja, Secretary General, House of Representatives on the enrolled bill submitted to the Office of the President for His Excellency's consideration and signature, pursuant to the provision, rules, provision of Rule 6, Section 18, Paragraph H of the Rules of the House of Representatives. House Bill Numbers 4923, 4924, 4925, 4937, 4940, and 4943. To the archives. Letter dated October 4, 2017, of Salvador C. Mijaldea, Executive Secretary, Office of the President, Malacanang, transmitting two original copies of Public Act Number 10952, which was signed on October 2, 2017, by President Rodrigo Roba Duterte. To the archives. Letter stated 29 September 2017 of Roger Edino, Deputy Director, Office of General Counsel and Legal Services, BSP, furnishing the House of Representatives with duly certified authenticated BSP issuances. To the Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries. Committee reports, report number 420 by the Committee on Welfare of Children and Appropriations on House Bill number 6550. To the Committee on Rules. Report number 421 by the Committee on Health and Appropriations on House Bill number 6551. To the Committee on Rules. Report number 422 by the Committee on Veterans Affairs and Welfare on House Resolution number 53. To the Committee on Rules. Report numbers 423 and 424 by the Committee on Information and Communications Technology on House Bill number 6557 and 6558. To the Committee on Rules, the Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, with leave of the House, I move for the consideration on third reading of House Bill 6396, printed copies of which were distributed to the members. Pursuant to the rules of the House, for this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call for the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The Chair hears none. The Secretary General is directed to 
uh, read the title of House Bill 6396 for consideration on third reading. Thereafter, for nominal voting. House Bill Number 6396, an act instituting policies for the protection and welfare of caregivers in the practice of their profession. Roll call of members, consideration House Bill Number 6396, Abaya, Abayon, Abillanosa, Abu, Abweg, Acheron, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agrao, Agabao, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Franz, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achenza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batokabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bulilia, Bondoc, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maravida, Brosas, Bulot Bigtang, Cagas, Calderon, Calix Rubiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Casa Franz, Casa Fredinil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serapica, Cirilles, Chávez, Chipeco, Co, Cuanco, Juliantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Rosalán, Crisólogo, Cuba, Cuaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesús, De Venecia, De Vera, Defensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Los Montalla, Dimopor Abdullah, Dimopor Muhammad, Dubavit, Durano, D, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Erigel, Ermita Buain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Ferriol, Floirendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Fentebella, Garbin, García Gwendolyn, García Jose, García Albano, Garin Richard, Garin Sharon, Gasataya, Gachelian, Heron, Goana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, González Alexandria, González Aurelio Dom, González Fernando, Goriceta, Gullas, Hernández, Herrera D, Hofer, Jalosos, Javier, Co, Conjun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lacetín, Liachon, Li, Limcaichong, Lobrigat, López Benhur, López Carlo, López Manuel, Loyola, Marpagalaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangododato Suarto, Mangododato Sajid, Marculeta, Marcos, Mariño, Marquez, Martínez, Matugas, Miliana, Mending, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Carlo, Nolasco, Núñez Maliñaon, Buminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Vini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Primicia Sagabas, Kimbo, Radasa, Ramos, Ramirezato, Relampagos, Rivilla, Roapuno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodriguez Isidro, Rodriguez Máximo, Román, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roquejari, Roque Rogelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salón, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento César, Sarmiento Edgar, 
Sevindiano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansing Estrelita, Swansing Horacio, Suarez, Si Alvarado, Tambunting, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Shirney, Tejada, Teves, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Tolentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Turabi Nataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Bareta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Vilarde, Velasco, Velasco Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villaperte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Vilago, Yap Artur, Yap Melesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Samora Mar Carmen, Samora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri. With 210 affirmative votes, no negative votes, no abstention votes, House Bill 6396 is approved on third reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on third reading of House Bill number 6431. For this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The chair hears none. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of House Bill 6431. Thereafter, call the roll for nominal voting on third reading. House Bill number 6431, an act granting Bohol Chronicle Radio Corporation a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio broadcasting stations in the province of Bohol. Roll call of members, consideration House Bill number 6431. Abaya, Abayon, Abillanosa, Abu, Abweg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agarau, Agabau, Aglifay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alihano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Franz, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Atchensa, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batukabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bulilla, Bondoc, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maravida, Brosas, Bulat Victan, Cagas, Calderon, Calixturbiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Castro Franz, Castro Pedinil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serafica, Cirilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co, Coanco, Williantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Roselán, Crisólogo, Cuba, Cuaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesús, De Venecia, De Vera, Defensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Los Montalla, Dimapor Abdullah, Dimapor Khalid, Duabit, Dorano, D, El Lago, Enverga, Erice, Erigel, Ermita Boain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Ferriol, Floirendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Pentebella, Garbin, Garcia Gwendolyn, Garcia Jose, Garcia Elbano, Garin Richard, Garin Sharon, Gasataya, Gachelian, Heron, Guana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzales Alexandria, Gonzales Arreyodong, Gonzales Fernando, Goreseta, Gullas, 
Hernández, Herrera D, Hofer, Alosos, Javier, Ko, Konghun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lasatin, Liachon, Li, Lim Kay Chong, Lubigat, Lopez Benhur, Lopez Carlo, Lopez Manuel, Loyola, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudadato Suarto, Mangudadato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Miliana, Minding, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Carlo, Nolasco, Nunez Malignaon, Guaminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Bini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Tumisia Sagabas, Kimbo, Radasa, Ramirez Sato, Ramos, Relampagos, Revilla, Roa Puno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodriguez Isidro, Rodriguez Maximo, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roque Jari, Roque Rogelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Saali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salon, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento Cesar, Sarmiento Edgar, Sabiliano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansing Estrellita, Swansing Horacio, Suarez, Silvarado, Tambunting, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Shirley, Tejada, Teves, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Tolentino, Reñas, Tugna, Tupas, Turabi Nataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Bereta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Vilarde, Velasco, Velasco Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villapuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Vilago, Yap Artur, Yap Melesho, Yap Victor, Yu, Samora Mar Carmen, Samora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri. With 214 affirmative votes, no negative vote, no abstention, House Bill 6431 is approved on third reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on third reading of House Bill number 1530. For this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The Chair hears none. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of House Bill 1530 for consideration on third reading. Thereafter, call for the roll on nominal voting. House Bill number 1530, an act requiring government agencies to indicate the blood type of individuals in the identification card, certificates, and licenses. Roll call of members consideration House Bill number 1530. Abaya, Abayon, Abellanosa, Abu, Abweg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alva, Adjong, Advincula, Agarau, Agabau, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez France, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achenza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batokabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Villiciano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bulilla, Bondoc, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Meravida, 
Brosas, Bulot Bigtang, Cagas, Calderon, Calix Rubiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Gary, Casilao, Castelo, Castro Franz, Castro Pedinil, Catamco, Caetano, Celeste, Serávica, Cerilles, Chávez, Chepeco, Co, Cuanco, Culiantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Cosalán, Crisólogo, Cuba, Cuaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesús, De Venecia, De Vera, De Pensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Los Montalla, De Moporo Dula, De Moporo Calid, Duavit, Durano, Di, El Lago, Enverga, Erice, Erigel, Ermita Boain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Periol, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Fentebelia, Garbin, García Gwendolyn, García Jose, García Elvano, Gary Richard, Gary Sharon, Gazataya, Gachelian, Jerón, Guana Prestina, Go Mark, Gómez, Gonzaga, González Alexandria, González Arrello Don, González Fernando, Gorseta, Gullas, Hernández, Herrerdi, Hofer, Alosos, Javier, Co, Conjun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lesatin, Liachon, Li, Limcaichon, Lobrigat, López Benur, López Carlo, López Manuel, Loyola, Macapagalaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudodato Suarto, Mangudodato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariño, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Miliana, Lending, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Carlo, Nolasco, Núñez Malignaon, Guaminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Vini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Primicia Sagabas, Kimbo, Radasa, Ramirez Sato, Ramos, Relampagos, Revilla, Ruapuno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodríguez Isidro, Rodríguez Máximo, Román, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roquejari, Roque Rogelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salón, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento César, Sarmiento Edgar, Sevillano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansing Estrita, Swansing Horacio, Suárez, Silvarado, Tambunting, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Shirney, Tejada, Teves, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Tolentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Turabi Nataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Bareta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Vilarde, Velasco, Velasco Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villapuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suárez, Villarica, Villarín, Villago, Yap Artur, Yap Milesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Samora Mar Carmen, Samora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri. With 214 affirmative votes, no negative vote, no abstention, House Bill 1530 is approved on third and final reading. The Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration and third reading of House Bill number 927. For this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The Chair is none. The Secretary General is directed to read the title 
of House Bill Number no. 927. Thereafter, call the roll for nominal voting on third reading. House Bill Number no. 927, an act converting the Land Transportation Office Licensing Center in the Municipality of Kawit, Province of Cavite, into a regular licensing center to be known as the LTO Cavite Licensing Center of Kawit, Cavite, and appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. Roll call of members, consideration House Bill number 927. Abaya, Abayon, Abillanosa, Abu, Abweg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agrao, Agabao, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez France, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achenza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batukabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte San Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertis, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bulilla, Bundok, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maravida, Brosas, Bulut Bektang, Cagas, Calderon, Calistrobiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Casa France, Casa Fredenil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serafica, Cirilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co, Cuanco, Colliantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Cusalan, Crisólogo, Cuba, Cuaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesús, De Venecia, De Vera, Defensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Los Montaña, Imapor Abdula, Imapor Khalid, Duavit, Durano, Di, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Erigel, Ermita Buain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Ferriol, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Pentebella, Garbin, García Gwendolyn, García José, García Elbano, Garin Richard, Garin Sharon, Gasataya, Gachalian, Heron, Guana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Alexandria, Gonzalez Arroyo Dong, Gonzalez Fernando, Guruseta, Gullas, Hernandez, Herrerdi, Hofer, Halusos, Javier, Co, Conghun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lesatin, Liachon, Li, Limkaichong, Lobrigat, Lopez Benhur, Lopez Carlo, Lopez Manuel, Loyola, Nakapagalaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudadato Suarto, Mangudadato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Miliana, Minding, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nugrales Jericho, Nugrales Carlo, Nolasco, Nunez Malignaon, Waminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Vini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Primicia Sagabas, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirez Sato, Ramos, Relampagos, Revilla, Roapuno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodriguez Isidro, Rodriguez Máximo, Román, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roque Harry, Roque Rogelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salón, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento César, Sarmiento Edgar, 
Savigliano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansing Estrita, Swansing Horacio, Suarez, Si Alvarado, Tambunting, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Shirney, Tejada, Teves, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Tolentino, Reñas, Tugna, Tupas, Turabi Nataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Bereta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Vilarde, Velasco, Velasco Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villapuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Villago, Yap Artur, Yap Milesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Samora Mar Carmen, Samora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri. With 217 affirmative votes, no negative vote, no abstention, House Bill 927 is approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that all bills approved on second reading be immediately, third reading be immediately sent to the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Any objection? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, today being a Monday and pursuant to our rules, I move that we open the privilege hour. Any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, before we recognize the uh, member who wants to avail of the privilege hour, may I have the uh, honor to acknowledge some guests at the gallery. Mr. Ms. Fulgencia C. Avellana, Mr. Emmanuel Q. Avellana, Mr. Francis Errol G. Avellana, Ms. Manilin G. Avellana, Mr. John Ray Lumayag, Mr. William Araniego, Ms. Ivy Araniego. Guests of the Honorable Henry S. Wamenal, Honorable Sabiniano S. Canama, and the Honorable Anthony M. Bravo. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Guests of Representatives Wamenal, Bravo, and Kamana, please rise. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, let us recognize our guest at the gallery. Guest of... Honorable Rico Heron, Representative Aga Partilist. Honorable Anthony Bravo, Representative Coop Natco Partilist. Honorable Sabiniano Canama, Representative Coop Natco Partilist. They are the Philippine Cooperative Center, Federation of Cooperative Workers Association, Philippine Federation of Electric Cooperatives, Novaliches Development Credit Cooperative, San Junicio Credit Cooperative, National Market Vendors Confederation of Cooperatives, Philippine Army Finance Center Producers Integrated Cooperative, Valenzuela Development Cooperative, Holy Cross Savings and Credit Cooperative, ACDI Multipurpose Cooperative, Cooperative Union of Cavite, Tatala Multipurpose Cooperative, Barranca Credit Cooperative, Cooperative Union of Marikina City, Tagalog Cooperative Development Center, Union of Cooperative Church-Based Cooperatives, Fides Multipurpose Cooperative, Mabuting Pastol Multipurpose Cooperative, OLAPCC, Salve Credit Cooperative, Most Holy Rosary Multipurpose Cooperative, Our Lady of Annunciation Paris Credit Cooperative, Cooperatives from Batangas, CBAP MPC, Simco MPC, Malalim MPC, Alupay MPC, San Jose Farmers MPC, Cooperative Union of Batangas, Provincial Cooperatives, Livelihood Enterprise Development Office, and Board of Directors from Soro Soro, Ibaba Development Cooperative, and Provincial Cooperative Development Council of Batangas. They are all guests of Honorable Rico Heron, 
Honorable Anthony Bravo and Honorable Sabiniano Kanama, Mr. Speaker. Mga panahon po ng ating kinatawang Rico Heron, Tony Bravo, Ben Kanama, pakitindig lamang po mula po sa sektor ng mga taga ng kooperatiba. Mabuhay po kayo at uh, malugod po kayong tinatanggap ng Kamara de Representante. Majority Leader. Sir Speaker, I move that we acknowledge uh, the visitors of the Congressman Raul V. Delmar of Cebu from the GCI Cebu Incorporated. Mr. Ken Ngo, GCI Philippines Vice President. Mr. Arman Baruel, the incoming president. Mr. Amya Steven Lau, Mr. Lito Lau, Mr. Dean Karatao, Mr. Kapadiv Mercado, Mr. Timothy Hong, Mr. Wai Kit Chan. So move, Mr. Speaker. Guests of Representative Raul Delmar, please rise. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that the gentleman from the 3rd District of Negros Oriental, the Honorable Arnolfo A. Tevis, Jr., be recognized to avail of the privilege arm. Representative Arnolfo Tevis, Jr., from the 3rd District, Negros Oriental, is recognized to avail his privilege hour. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I rise here today, this afternoon, to speak on tax evasion. Nung nakaraan dito, nandito yung taga-BIR nung budget hearing, I think, last year, meron akong binigay na example sa kanya ng kita ng dalawang malalaking kumpanya at tinanong ko, kung bakit hindi nila napansin na kung binusisi mo yung kita, obvious na under-declared yung declared income nila. Hindi nila hinahabol at sa nangyari pa na yun, parang nag sa pa yung isang matandang tauhan ng BR. Here, it happened here in plenary. What am I trying to drive at? How does the BIR collect taxes? Nangungulekta tayo ng buwis kung ano lang yung sinabi ng kumpanya. Di ba? Pero kung maliliit na tao hinahabol, kung malalaking kumpanya, bahala na pinapabayaan, tinutulungan pa. What is the effect of this on the, on the majority of our brother and sister Filipinos? Kung yung malalaking dapat magbayad ng buwis, hindi nagbabayad, Mangungulekta na naman tayo sa mahihirap nating mga kapatid. Hindi maganda. Merong mga nagbebenta ng sabon, shampoo at beauty products. I think it's a 2 billion industry. Magkano lang yung binabayad na buwis? Bakit hindi ito hinahabol? Yung ibang ano, Yung in-example ko sa BIR, hindi ko lang sasabihin dito dahil ayoko na dumami yung kalaban. Pero dapat sila sana. Alam na lang, it's very obvious. I already showed them. Tinanong pa ako ng taga-BIR, saan mo nakuha yung figures na yun? Of course, I got it also from those companies. It's very easy. You check their, their declared income. Alam naman natin kung ilang tao yung gumagamit or bumibili nung, nung services o produkto nila makikita mo doon lumalabas kung magkano lang per capita. So, obvious, obvious na under-declared talaga. And the taxes that we could collect will run into several billions. Again, kung inayos natin to, hindi na nga kailangan yung bagong tax measure, pero napasa na natin yon dagdag na lang sana yon But again, even if that tax measure, hindi pa lumalabas. Kung inayos na yung collection sa BIR at sa customs, hindi na natin kailangan mangulekta ng, ng additional buwis. No need to do other legislation for, ex, for additional taxes that will burden our um, poor brothers and sisters. 
One more thing, I wrote the President a letter. I wrote all the Senators a letter on the no X-ray, no entry policy. Nagsalita lang ako ngayon para mapaalalahanan ang lahat na sana naman mabigyan ng pansin yung sulat ko. That will only cost the country 25 billion pesos. And definitely, the country will earn an additional 140 billion in customs collections per year. Kumita na kagad ng 115 billion ang ating bansa sa isang taon pa lang. Sana lang mabigyang pansin yung pinadala kong sulat, I sent to the President and I sent to all the Senators of this country. Lastly, alam natin tayong lahat nagsasubmit ng salin. Tayo, lahat, lahat ng congressman, lahat ng public officials nagsasubmit ng salin. Ang dami palang private na individual, private na kumpanya, ang liliit ng binabayaran na buwis, hindi nakikita ng BIR, hindi chinecheck, ang dami nilang acquisition. Doon palang halata na. Di ba? Magbayad ka ng buwis isang milyon isang taon. Yung property acquisitions mo, umaabot ng 500 million sa isang taon. Di ba? Obvious na kaagad yun that there's something wrong. Again, I just like to remind the BIR and the customs, ayusin natin yung trabaho natin at makakatulong tayo sa, sa ating bansa. No? Nakakainis nga, parang pag politiko ka, ang dami ka agad duda, istrikto sa salin. Let us look at also the private companies and individuals para patas naman ang lahat. Um, that's all for now, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon again. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the uh, Honorable Tevez to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Any objection? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that the, that the gentleman from the Lone District, Malabon City, with the title of his uh, speech, Road Damage Due to Overloading, be recognized to avail the privilege hour. Honorable Representative Federico Ricci as Sandoval II. One minute. Session suspended. Sessions resume. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that uh, we recognize party list co op not co representative Anthony Bravo to avail the privilege hour. Representative Anthony Bravo from party list co op not co is recognized for his availment of privilege hour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Good afternoon to everyone distinguished colleague and leaders of the cooperative in the gallery. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, I rise today to speak about the, the very special occasion we are celebrating, the National Cooperative Month. This celebration is significant not only to the nearly 14 million cooperative members, but to the whole country, given the huge impact of cooperatives in the lives of Filipinos especially to the vulnerable groups who have less in life. Every opportunity, Mr. Speaker, that we see for the cooperative, or every year, we stand up here to honor the men and women of the cooperative movement. And this year is no different, Mr. Speaker. We will always stand up for the cooperative sector as we collectively work towards the mainstreaming of the cooperative system as a unique business model and as a tool for social justice and poverty eradication. 
This August Chamber is certainly party to the successes of the cooperative movement, having supported policies and legislations supportive to the growth of the cooperative sector. The Philippine Cooperative Code is the most important legislation for the sector that this chamber passed. Recently, we also passed the House version of the Tax Reform Bill, which uphold the VAT exemption of cooperatives. Again, I would like to sincerely thank our distinguished colleagues for the overwhelming support on that initiative. The United Nations regard cooperative as a partner in achieving its 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and encourages government to develop a supportive legal regulatory environment for the creation and development of cooperatives. Mr. Speaker, honorable members of this August Chamber, allow me to impart to you once again the economic and social relevance of our cooperatives and how they contribute to the sustainable and inclusive development goals of the government. Economic contribution of cooperatives. The economic contribution of cooperatives could be best illustrated by how cooperatives allow people to help themselves by creating their own economic opportunities. The economic contribution of cooperatives or the various loans provided by cooperatives to the respective members are utilized to put up micro-businesses and which in turn provide indirect employment and sources of income for the respective families. Currently, the Cooperative Development Authority reports that there are 16,940 existing cooperatives or those that are operating while there are 8,970 cooperatives that are for rehabilitation. Out of these 9,432 cooperatives have reported a total consolidated asset of 291.8 billion, Mr. Speaker. These assets could be considered an investment that will benefit not only few stockholders, but millions of cooperators. 7,647,776 cooperative members, to be exact. The billions of cooperative assets utilized in various economic activities and business ventures of cooperatives certainly contribute to the capital formation that fuels economic growth of the country. Cooperatives are tax generators. In 2016, total tax withheld by cooperatives amounted to 6.94 billion pesos, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to note that we have 41 billionaire cooperatives in the country, spread in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And let me name a few. In Luzon, we have the ECDI multipurpose cooperatives with 15 billion assets co-owned by its 104, 699 members. In Visayas, we have the Cebu CFI community cooperatives with 10.5 10 billion assets and 94,600 99 members. In Mindanao, we have the first community cooperative with membership of 263,997 in an asset of 8.3 billion pesos. We also have big cooperative federation that unite primary cooperatives and assist their development pursuits. The National Confederation of Cooperatives has 840 cooperative affiliates nationwide with combined membership of 4.2 million individuals and a combined asset of 124 billion. The Philippine Federation of Credit Cooperatives has 792 cooperative affiliates with combined 1.2 members and combined assets of 35 billion. The MASPEC Cooperative Development Center currently has 308 cooperative affiliates and a combined membership of more than 1 million individuals and total assets of 25 billion. MassSpec has celebrated its 50th anniversary last year, Mr. Speaker. In the last five decades, this cooperative federation has been at the forefront of cooperative development in Mindanao. Allow me to show you a short video, Mr. Speaker, of how mass spec has grown through the years.
the growth of MOSPEC. In Mindanao, a strong federation has brought light into communities, successfully leading savings, credit, and other financial initiatives towards flourishing livelihoods. The MOSPEC Cooperative Development Center, or MOSPEC, Advancing Sustainable Lives in Mindanao. MASPEC is the nation's leading and largest regional federation of cooperatives with more than 179 active primary cooperatives, provincial federations, and non-government institutions with about half billion assets. The success of MASPEC is the product of the men and women who braved to gather cooperatives all over Mindanao into one strong confederation with integrity, professionalism, and commitment. These leaders are the best epitome of the ideologies that the institution promotes in its trainings and educational programs for other corps. Through these efforts and the continuous development of its products and services, MASPEC fulfills its mission of achieving viability, integration, and development of the cooperative sector and ultimately promote a favorable environment for equity and growth. Since the 70s, MASPEC is known as the product champion of cooperativism in Mindanao. To continue this legacy, we shall strive by servicing the growing businesses of co-ops and build them up to achieve world-class standards. In this way, we believe that we make significant contributions to the socio-economic development of the tribe people of Mindanao. To achieve our mandate, MASPEC shall be known as the cooperative training capital regaining our original co-op guru structure. As business consultant, providing various consultancy services like planning, finance, credit management, marketing, research, and data banking. MASPEC also shall continue to be an IT leader, connecting our co-ops with the banking mainstream by providing services such as online banking, ATMs, electronic fund transfer point of sale, mobile and internet banking services. As capital sourcer and mobilizer, developing high earning projects through lending operations and external borrowings. As an investment packager within Mindanao and even beyond Mindanao for branch expansion and networking with cops. From a simple community initiative, the strong, viable, and people-oriented confederation MASPEC Cooperative Development Center advances a brilliant torch of hope as it advances sustainable lives in Mindanao. May I proceed, Mr. Speaker, on the contribution of cooperative to human community development. Mr. Speaker, cooperatives are focused on human needs. The 26 types of cooperatives that we have in the country cater to the basic and specialized needs of their members and community. Credit and financial services are the most popular feature of cooperatives, but co-op services are actually extensive. 68 percent of our cooperatives are multi-purpose type, which means they are engaged in one or two business activities. Cooperatives could be found in the production, agriculture sector, banking sector, education, electric service, transport service, health service, housing, water service, labor service, tourism, consumer and marketing, and others. Currently, due to the growing need of vulnerable, vulnerable groups, the CDA or Cooperative Development Authority already recognized other types of cooperatives organized by senior citizens, persons with disabilities, reform MNLF and combatants, indigenous peoples, and rehabilitated drug victims. The cooperative sector also absorbed part of the country's productive labor force. The labor force survey reported that there were 40.8 million employed persons in 2016. The cooperative share to this employment is 1.47 percent, as the sector generated 599,867 jobs. It could be higher since the data of the CDA is only based on the reporting cooperative, about 9,432 cooperatives. At first glance, we may perhaps think 
that 1.47 percent is very minimal, Mr. Speaker. But if we compare it with the employment contribution by other sectors, it is still significant. For example, the Labor Force Survey 2016 revealed that the mining and quarrying sector contributed only 0.5 percent to the overall employment, while the information and communication service sector has contributed 0.9 percent. In terms of community development, every cooperative allocates 3 percent of their net surplus for community development fund, or CDF, which fund projects for the community where they operate. In 2016, the CDF, or Community Development Fund, of the top 100 cooperatives alone amounts to 479.7 million, or close to half billion pesos. With the CDF, cooperatives conduct medical and dental missions, livelihood trainings, scholarship programs, feeding programs, relief operations, tree planting, and other programs for, for environment or protection of environment. It is the cooperative's way of giving back to the community. In 2015, cooperatives have contributed a total amount of 1.5 billion of community development fund as their share in community development. Cooperatives are also tapped as conduits or delivery channels of government programs, including the DSWD for Peace and DTI's P3, or Pondo sa Pagbabago at Pag Asenso program, which is a social microcredit program. This because cooperatives are strategically located in 17 regions and they are operating even in the remotest area of the country where the intended beneficiaries could be rich. Summing up the significant contribution of cooperatives, we would arrive at only one thing, Mr. Speaker, and that is people empowerment. And these are the challenges faced by the cooperatives, Mr. Speaker. While we take pride of the gains of the sector and its contribution to the economy in the Filipino people, you also recognize that every year is a struggle as the sector faces several challenges that hinder it from realizing its full potentials. First, is the overlapping of excessive regulation for cooperatives. While the CDA is the main regulatory body for cooperatives, it cannot fully regulate some types of cooperatives due to institutional incapacity. For example, transport cooperatives are regulated by the CDA, the Office of Transport Cooperatives in the Land Transportation Franchising Regulatory Board. It is hoped that we could streamline and harmonize regulation at, as it is counterproductive for cooperatives. Second, while cooperatives are recognized as a tool for attainment of social justice and economic development, cooperatives has yet maximized has not yet maximized their potentials due to a weak regulatory body, the Cooperative Development Authority, with its visionary cooperative regulation programs, could not implement such due to the absence of necessary funding from the national government. The CDA proposed an annual budget of 1.3 billion for 2018 to meet its roadmap anchored on the current administration's socioeconomic agenda and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. However, the DVM only approves 534 million, which this chamber also approved. Third, is the imminent threat to remove the tax exemption of cooperatives. The tax reform for acceleration inclusion and fiscal incentive, incentive bills both seek to revoke the tax incentive of cooperatives provided for in the Philippine Cooperative Code. Fourth, is the absence of an ideal cooperative apex organization that could address the concern of the cooperative sector. The apex body would be a unifying force of the sector with which the government will be consulting within matters relative to policies and economic programs. Fifth, majority or 80% of our cooperatives remain in the micro and small category. While it has been addressed in the revised implementing rules and regulation of Republic Act 9520, we need to continuously support and encourage the development of the small and micro cooperatives. I therefore call our colleagues in this August chamber on the following action. At this point, Mr. Speaker, may I call on the government to support our prospect for the cooperative sector as follows.
Streamlining and harmonization of regulation for cooperatives. Number two, strengthening of cooperative development authority and to pursue policies for its possible conversion into a regular department. Third, for the government to promote awareness of cooperatives by including cooperative education in the curriculum from elementary to college and post-graduate levels. Fourth, to develop market linkages for agricultural cooperatives, especially in the era of ASEAN economic integration. Five, to uphold the tax incentives as stipulated in Article 1661 of the Philippine Cooperative Code or Republic Act 9520. Six, to support the establishment of ideal cooperative apex body and to legally recognize it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. The Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that the uh, privileged uh, speech of the gentleman be referred to the uh, Committee on Rules. So move, Mr. Speaker. Any objection? There's none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we have a uh, guest in the gallery of the Honorable Tomasito Tom S. Villarin, Representative Akbayan Party List, from CCAP Laya Incorporated, or CLAI. We have uh, Mr. Pancho Olata, Ms. Marlene Gala, Ms. Nancy De Paz, Ms. Lorna Balsi, Ms. Neri Ann Vihar, Mr. Victor Villapando, Ms. Lorini Soleta, Ms. Amy Ducador, Ms. Gina Villanueva, Mr. Danilo Serrano, and others. I move that we recognize them, Mr. Speaker. Guests of uh, Congressman Tom Villarin from Macbayan Party List, please rise. Welcome to the House of Representatives. <laughs> Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now recognize the gentleman from the 3rd District of Camarini Sur, the Honorable Gabriel H. Bordado, for his uh, privileged speech. So move, Honorable uh, Representative Gabriel Bordado, Jr., from the 3rd District, Camarini Sur, is recognized to avail his uh, privilege. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I stand here to speak on behalf of the powerless, to wit, the unemployed, the marginalized, those who have been too dependent on private and public assistance for a prolonged period, those who have lost their creativity and dignity as persons, and those who have given up hope in the exercise of their fundamental rights as citizens of this republic. Mr. Speaker, powerlessness, which is a cause and effect of poverty, was something I had taken for granted. My parents from Bicol or Calamanga Camarini Sur told me that we were poor. And I accepted that pronouncement matter-of-factly. Later on, Mr. Speaker, I would realize that we were not exactly in dire straits compared to other families in our barrio. As I grew up, the said realization became more pronounced as I was exposed by then to the multifarious situations, not only in our barrio, but also in other areas of the country where the faces of hunger, destitution, and utter hopelessness haunted me in my dreams and in my nightmares. In my adult years, Mr. Speaker, I had numerous opportunities to work for entities dealing with poverty alleviation. 
my concept of poverty and powerlessness in turn broadened but not to the point of analyzing and dissecting them in a cold, detached fashion. One observation, though, seems to have been etched in my mind, that powerlessness entires a profound kind of deprivation, a denial of full participation in the economic, social, and political life of society, and an inability to influence decisions that affect one's life. Mr. Speaker, the conflicting points raised by Jeffrey Sachs in his book, The End of Poverty, and William Easterly in the book, The White Man's Burden, ironically fired up my resolve to delve deeper into the profundities and underpinnings of poverty. While I was at first amazed and somehow impressed by the simplicity of Sachs' prescription to end poverty, it gradually dawned on me, Mr. Speaker, that such was not the case, especially in the light of Easterly's contention, fully backed by empirical data that the supposed aid given by the rich nation to their poor counterparts seem to have exacerbated the already miserable and convoluted situation. Mr. Speaker, my position was further affirmed and validated by the various experiences I studied and evaluated. The introduction of poverty indicators and indices, along with the profiling schemes, did open up wide avenues for me to view with a high degree of objectivity on how is it to be poor in multiple contexts. Paulo Freire's expostulations on education in the book entitled Pedagogy of the Oppressed gave me additional insights into how education which is usually acknowledged, Mr. Speaker, as the great equalizer, can actually enslave instead of empowering and liberating the people. Freire's contentions, specifically the banking education concept, find resonance in our educational system, buttressing in the process Renato Constantino's assertion that generations of Filipinos had been and are still being miseducated. Yet, Mr. Speaker, there had to be some solution somewhere. In due time, therefore, I segued into the idea of development, taking note of the theories and practices, traditions, and narratives, among others. For me, Mr. Speaker, development assumed an entirely different dimension, at least in so far as my personal perception before reading the books was concerned, especially if viewed and filtered through the prisms of the so-called conservative tradition subsuming the theories of economic growth and modernization. I gained some insights into what really propelled development, including its origins and drivers, as I focused on the development narratives of modernization, conflict, reforms, crossover to transition economies, emergence of civil society, corporate social responsibility, and communitarianism. Mr. Speaker, theories on tripartism 
have been particularly helpful in as much as we are re-evaluating our setup there in the city of Naga in Bicol, which had long institutionalized engagements with non-government organizations, people's organizations, and the private sector. Indeed, I agree with the conclusion made by a researcher that there had been focus on the increasing capacity of governments, private sector, and the NGOs to pursue development goals. Moreover, Mr. Speaker, through tripartism, sharing power with the powerless becomes possible. But then, our decades-long partnerships with these groups need to be assessed, specifically their impact on the city in general and individual resident in particular. Half a decade ago, Mr. Speaker, I came across a pronouncement from the Catholic Church that, I quote, the universal destination of goods requires that the poor, the marginalized, and in all cases, whose living conditions interfere with their proper growth should be the focus of particular concern. And through this end, the preferential option for the poor should be reaffirmed in all its forces." Unquote. Today, Mr. Speaker, as legislators, we are challenged to make a fundamental option for the poor, to speak for the voiceless and for the powerless, even as we endeavor to craft laws aimed at uplifting their condition. Given the scheme of things, Mr. Speaker, I believe that there is a need to overhaul the system. This is where the call of President Rodrigo Duterte to shift to the federal form of government comes in. Mr. Speaker, we must, however, make sure that federalism will not only strengthen the autonomy of the regions, but will also develop the dignity, the freedom, and the integrity of the poor and the powerless. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Gentleman to the Committee on Rules. So move, Mr. Speaker. Any objection? The chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that the uh, gentleman from party list AGAP, the Honorable Rico B. Heron, be recognized to avail of the privileged hour. So move, Mr. Speaker. Representative Rico B. Heron from AGAP party list is recognized to avail his uh, privilege. Maraming, maraming salamat po, Ginoong Speaker. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Majority Floor Leader. Isang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Mr. Speaker, steam colleagues in this house, fellow cooperators, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Party list AGAP, the Agricultural Sector Alliance of the Philippines, joined the celebration of COP Month this October 2017, together with other party lists. October, as Cooperative Month, was declared under Presidential Decree No. 493, signed by then-President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, who is now our colleague here in the House. The theme for this year's Cooperative Month celebration is Cooperatives Empowering the Poor and the Vulnerable Towards Job Creation and Poverty Eradication. In other words, P 
people empowerment. The organization of cooperative is empowerment in itself. It gives the people a shot at the chance to make their lives better through Bayanihan and their own collective effort. It is people caring and caring for each other to get through everyday life for sustenance. For confidence that he can make things better, not only for himself, but also for others in his community. It is said that no man is an island, but if that island is a cooperative, no man can ever be alone in the island where self-reliance and sufficiency reigns. So much has been said about cooperatives. The litanies about cooperatives being self-help organization, that it generates and provides employment for its members, that it provides livelihood for its members, which filters down to the community, that it delivers services where the government cannot provide, that it is a contributor to the GNP of the country, that there are good cooperatives, that there are fly-by-night cooperatives, that it does not ask for capital to start up, but applies for assistance to augment its capital. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, my esteemed colleagues, these litanies are all true. It speaks of the truth of what cooperatives are. It might be a little defining when the word poor is repeatedly st stated as in to help the poor, to alleviate the sufferings of the poor, to help our poor brethren. I say, malamang itong mga poor na ito ay wala pa sa buhay kooperatiba. Hindi pa sila na-indoctrinate sa buhay kooperatiba. Walang poor sa kilusang kooperatiba. Kung miyembro ka, kahit paano may kabuhayan ka, may pinagkakabalahan ka para mabuhay ng matiwasay. Cooperative is life. The theme, cooperatives empowering the poor and the vulnerable towards job creation and poverty eradication, aptly reflects the collective aspiration of all cooperatives in our country and elsewhere in the world. People come together to set up cooperatives precisely to address their needs, to alleviate their present condition and the lives of their community through Bayanihan spirit. Cooperative is collective giving and sharing of resources for the benefit of the majority. One of the sectors that truly benefits from cooperative system, if properly implemented, are those who are down in their luck. And one of the areas where the cooperative presence is tangibly felt is in job creation. Cooperative gives access and opportunity to the economically challenged constituents constituencies to become educated and more productive through skills training and employment. Cooperatives hire employees for its operation and service deliveries and is therefore in its own is a venue for employment generation. The Cooperative Development Authority or the CDA presented the statistics on top five types of cooperative with highest job Generation generating rate. The cooperative principles of cooperation among cooperatives can also be translated to collaboration with agencies such as technical vocational institutions and other training providers that offer scholarship for skills trainings and knowledge upgrading because these are tested avenues for lucrative association and mutual benefits. The aim of the cooperative is to train its members with skills that will contribute to his stability and sustainability and that of their cooperative as the success of cooperative largely depend on its members' participation. On the other hand, should these members of the cooperative seek employment outside the cooperative, the cooperative will be assured that their training their members' endeavors will redound to their benefit. 
The cooperative is a contributor to its member success and vice versa. I advocate the need to collaborate for success. Being self-sufficient and self-reliant in a cooperative milieu is a virtue, but it should not stop there. Finding opportunities to, add, to aid one's development is healthy to any organization or association, cooperatives included. Collaboration has different levels and findings. The right collaboration ensures success in one's endeavors. We have successful collaborations entered into by cooperatives, and this is exemplified through the Land Bank of the Philippines Gawad Pita Awards or the Gawad sa Pinakatanging Cooperativa. As the, chair, the chairperson of the Committee on Cooperatives Development, I am designated as the co-chairperson of this Gawad Pitak program of the Land Bank of the Philippines. With your indulgence, may I present this year's outstanding performing cooperatives. My esteemed colleagues, please know your constituent successful cooperatives. The Pinakatanging Cooperative winner from the Agri-Based category is the Bontok Multipurpose Cooperative from Bontok Southern Leyte. The other contenders for this category are, for the first runner-up, is the Libacao Development Cooperative of Libacao Aklan. The second runner-up is the Batangas Sugar Planters Cooperative Marketing Association of Balayan Batangas. The third runner-up is the Bantug Agricultural MPC of Talavera Nueva Ecija. And the fourth runner-up, Cooperativa Natun, Multipurpose Cooperative of Tigbawan, Iloilo. These are outstanding cooperatives who took the risk to collaborate with the banking institution for their growth and progress. Now, their members and the cooperative itself are reaping the benefits. The Pinakatanging Cooperative, cooperative winner for the non-agri-based category is the Abra Diocesan Teacher and Employees Multipurpose Cooperative of Banged Abra. The other contenders are, for the first runner-up, Pinoy Lingap Damayan MPC of Bira Catanduanes, while the second runner-up is What's Life Workers MPC of Maribeles Bataan. The third runner-up is Providers MPC of Nagilian Isabela, and the fourth runner-up is the Golden Group Gabay Puhunan Brotherhood MPC of San Fernando Pampanga. The Land Bank, Gawad Pitak, also recognizes individual achievers, the Ulirang Magsasaka, was awarded to Mr. Cesar Tabago, the General Manager of the Sapang Multipurpose Cooperative of Moncada, Tarla. There are also the Hall of Famers. Awardees meaning they have won two times in the Gawad Pitak program of the Land Bank of the Philippines, that they have no other way to go but be an icon of success and are now qualified to join the Ginuntuang Award category. The Buena Vista Development Cooperative of Buena, Best, Buena Vista Province of Guevaras and the Sacred Heart Savings Cooperative of Galimuyod, Ilocosur. The Ginuntuang Gawad Pitak for the Agri-Based category is Nagkakaisang Magsasaka Agricultural Primary Multipurpose Cooperative of Talavera, Nueva Ecija. This co-op is now qualified for the Platinum Award if it wins again. In 2016, the Cebu CFI Community Cooperative of Cebu, with no less than the mother of our colleague, Gwen Garcia, the late Judge Esperanza Garcia, is the founder was conferred the highest Gawad Pitak Award, the Platinum Award. The SIDC, or the Sorosoro Ibaba Development Cooperative in Batangas, was the first cooperative to be conferred the Gawad Pitak Platinum Award in 2013 after having received the Ginintoang Award from the Land Bank of the Philippines. Another Gawad Pitak Platinum Award is the Lamak Multipurpose Cooperative in Lamak, Pinamungahan, Cebu. Indeed, cooperatives are everywhere because it is a way of life. It is life because it is a job provider. We also have a cooperative that has been cooperating since 1982. Its member is composed of several 
services of the armed forces of the Philippines in its ambitions to improve the lives of their members by providing dynamic and integrated services. The ACDI Multipurpose Cooperative, and it has responded to the needs of their members, especially with the crisis in Mindanao in Marawi City, where our men in uniform are facing the challenges for and in behalf of our country. Mr. Speaker, esteemed colleagues, there are realities in co-op sector which, by reason of bad strategic planning, defective decision-making, or where the cooperative is not operating in a cooperative way. This representation, as chairman of the Committee on Cooperative Development, together with several members of the committee, including the representatives of Palawan, Deputy Speaker Frederick Abweg, Representative Franz Alvarez, and Representative Hill Acosta conducted an investigation in Puerto Princesa City, Palawan, on the plight of the oil palm cooperative Growers Cooperative versus a multinational company on the initiative of Deputy Minority Leader Anthony Bravo and Representative Sabiniano Kanama. The committee was faced with the reality of the vulnerability of the cooperative against the capitalist investors. We realize that the only way that the cooperative and its members can be protected is through education educating and training them on co-op governance and entrepreneurship skills. An other added factor would be exposure to linkages through the internet for more accessibility to knowledge and for total awareness on the best practices of organization. The committee was also able to affirm the necessity of having a cooperative development officer in the municipality, city, and provincial level to ensure that the cooperative concerns are attended to and guidance is given to cooperative, be it a new cooperative or not. This has been addressed by the Committee on Cooperative Development and this House when it passed it on third reading. House Bill number 5682 is now pending with the Senate. The Cooperative Development Authority, the only re registering agency for all cooperative also needs to be capacitated more through an increase in its operating capital outlay. The cooperative movement with all the accomplishment it has achieved for all endeavors it has successfully delivered to its members and in the community where it operates and to our country with the least government intervention is, is still embattled as the revenue collecting agency is focused on removing the privileges granted to it under the 9520, the Philippine Cooperative Code of 2008. The cooperative movement maintains that cooperatives are independent organizations delivering and contributing to this country's socioeconomic upliftment with no direct cost implication to the government. As a member of this August Chamber, I would like to commend this House, my esteemed colleagues, for standing up to the cause of the co-op sector. Co-op sector's right to retain its tax exemption privilege as provided for under Republic Act 9520 for, or the Cooperative Code of 2008. Tunay pong ang inyong ginawang pagsuporta upang mapanatili ang tax exemption privilege ng mga kooperatiba ay isang maliwanag na hakbang ng pagsuporta sa ating mga maliliit na mga mamamayang Pilipino. At dahil po dito, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. I am confident that the retention of the tax exemption privilege of our cooperative is paid accomplished because the co-op sector has a co-op man in the Senate. Cooperatives as a basic organization of the grassroots level has leveled up as even the most prestigious offices and organizations have cooperatives in their midst or are supporting cooperatives through their CSR or the corporate social responsibility. It is a fact that government agencies have allocation to support the endeavors of cooperatives such as the Department of Agrarian Reform, the Department of Agriculture, among others. The stability of the cooperative sector is supported by the government itself 
so our co-op sector, our co-op movement must guard itself and monitor its ranks in order to keep up with cooperative principle. Advocated by International Cooperative Alliance of Voluntary and Open Membership, Democratic Member Control, Member Economic Participation, Autonomy and Independence, Education, Training and Information, Cooperation among Cooperatives, and Concern for Community. The Joint Congressional Oversight Committee on Cooperatives of this House and the Senate is monitoring the implementation of the Philippine Cooperative Code of 2008 through its implementing rules and regulation. It has also taken cognizance of the issues and concern of the co-op sector and has intervened on behalf of the sector. At this point, I would like to share, to share my advocacy on the three Cs, coordination, communication, and cooperation. With three Cs, any organization will survive all challenges to its growth and stability. And finally, let me leave you with three lessons on successful cooperatives. Organizing work learned over the years among cooperators is striving for economic upliftment on the basis of seven cooperative principles. One, build on hope and not on fear. Two, strive for self-reliance. And lastly, maintain a democratic structure. The Committee on Cooperative Development, in collaboration with the Cooperative Development Authority and the Land Bank of the Philippines, invites you to an exhibit on people empowerment through cooperatives on October 23 to 26, 2017 at the North Lobby of this House. Magandang gabi po at maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that the that we refer the speech to the uh, of the uh, Honorable Heron to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Mr. Any Speaker. objection? The chair is done. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, let us uh, recognize Honorable Representative Florida Rida Robes to uh, avail our privilege hour. Mr. Speaker, I move to extend our privilege hour for another one hour. An objection? The chair is none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I now move that the lady from the Partilis Kabataan, Honorable Representative Sarah Jane Ilago, with the title of a speech, Students' Democratic Right, be recognized to avail of the Privilege Hour, Mr. Speaker. Representative Sarah Jane Ilago from Partilis Kabataan is recognized to avail her privilege. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This, rep this representation rises today in a matter of personal and collective privilege on the wave of attacks on campus press and student institutions and organizations. The campus press has an invaluable contribution in the restoration and preservation of free speech and expression inside and outside our nation's campuses. Likewise, student councils and governments have played an essential role in the advancement of students' democratic rights and welfare. No student leadership can be of utmost significance other than the one that is responsive to the demands of the objective condition of the Philippine educational system and the Philippine society at large. It is not enough that student leaders identify the what, where, and when of our society. Student leadership must be critical of addressing the whys of our society. We must lead the students to get involved and participate on people's issues and concerns that affect the interests of the marginalized sectors. 
with their heightened participation on societal issues and concerns, most apparently in the showing of tens of thousands of youth and students on the streets on September 21st this year to call to stop the killings and never again to martial law. From then on, followed a crackdown on student leaders and members. Campus press freedom has been throttled in different parts of the country. In the Lyceum of the Philippines University, the school's 32-year-old official student publication, The Independent Sentinel, faces closure as the administration planned without the consent of the members of the Independent Sentinel to reorganize the publication. Once reorganized, its operation will be under the school administration's control. Despite assertion and strong condemnation of the students, the LPU admin maintains its stance, its stand to revamp the student publication. Recent actions of the administration manifested by delaying the application process for new members, removal of publication fee, and postponement of its transition to a new editorial board that essentially removes the student's right to run, publish, and manage an autonomous student publication. Similar forms of repression have been committed against other campus publications all over the Philippines. Last month alone, series of campus press freedom violations and attacks to democratic rights has been reported by the College Editors Guild of the Philippines. In Camarines Sur, on September 25, the spark publication of Camarines Sur Polytechnic College, or the CSPC in Nabua, learned that they are part of a watch list of the armed forces of the Philippines based on a text message received by one of their school officials. Included in the said watch list are other member publications of the CEGP in the said province, particularly the Pillars publication of Ateneo de Naga University, the Seafarers Gazette of Mariners Polytechnic College Foundation, and the Statians publication of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. This is not the first time that member publications of CEGP in Camarines Sur are harassed by the state forces. March of this year, the PNP Baao warned CEGP, CEGP's member publication not to join any activities of the said formation. After a series of dialogues, the PNP in, ba in Baao admitted on live radio interview that the CEGP is under surveillance due to the progressive orientation of the guild. In PUP's The Catalyst, the school administration has taken over the local publication and also assumed control over fonts, printing, and editorial policies. The administration plans to create a student publication section, or SPS, and currently, no, guideline, no guidelines have been released by the administration, but under this SPS, operations of all college-based publications and university-wide publication, The Catalyst, will have to undergo and be approved by the administration. The administration has been pushing for the formulation of the implementing guidelines of the SPS, of the SPS since last academic year but strong opposition from the Alianza ng Kabataang Mama Mahayag, or AKM ng PUP, the PUP System-Wide Alliance of Student Publications has successfully blocked the move. Almost always, student publications, being at the forefront of forwarding the interest of students and the Filipino people, inevitably face various forms of threats and harassments from the school administration and the state to suppress them. Student publications, as an alternative press, has been consistent in exposing and opposing the current regime's lopsided and iron-handed approach in dealing with systemic problems of our country. The harassment of the student publications in Camarines Sur in the form of intimidation dis displays the intensified state fascism. It is a calibrated attack done 
to neutralize the progressive student papers, which are critical of, of the Duterte regime's actions, such as its war on drugs, extrajudicial killings, and martial law in Mindanao. While in the case of the capitalist and the independent sentinel, it only highlights the fascist nature of Philippine educational institutions, which are more than willing to violate students' rights in order to preserve their reputation and protect their business interests. On student and youth democratic rights, PUP conducted a forced election of the student regent and replaced the latter with an admin-backed representative. It also closed down student offices and tambayan spaces and intimidated student leaders. Meanwhile, the UP College of Mass Communication is also insistent on keeping the Faculty Student Relations Committee manual, which is oriented towards preventing the full attainment of the mass students' right to organization. An activist, from Anakbayan of De La Salle University was harassed by police forces clad in civilian outfits where said policemen went to the La Salian uh, student activist home and disclosed that they knew of his progressive ties and that the police had logs of the whereabouts of progressive individuals and organizations. They also warned that his failure to end his progressive affiliations would bring about their consequences for him and for his group. Similar incidents have also occurred to student activists from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines in the past few days. The experience of harassment by suspected military forces, either by violating their domiciles or by harassing, threatening, and robbing them outright in the streets. It is alarming that these attacks on student democratic rights are still continuing. What is more dangerous is that these attacks are intensified and supported by other suppressive apparatus of the government, citing the presence of police forces in these various repressive activities. Meanwhile, outside campuses, Oplan Tokhang and the culture of impunity surrounding it has killed the likes of Carl Arnaiz, Kian de los Santos, Efrain Escudero, and most recently, Aldin Hore, a 16-year-old student from Commonwealth High School. Oplan Kapayapaan, likewise, has claimed countless lives in the countryside, one of which is Obelio Baiao, a 19-year-old grade 7 student from Salogpongan Community Learning Center, slain just around September 5. The continued implementation of martial law in Mindanao has brought nothing but havoc and death upon our mother brothers and sisters, both young and old. And we will not let these attacks cripple the students' and youth capacity and zeal to continue demanding for their rights and welfare, for free education, free use of spaces and facilities, the right to organize and assemble among the democratic rights of students, youth, and the Filipino people. And Mr. Speaker, dear colleagues, the task now is to unite and fight for our democratic rights and interests, all for a just and better future for the Filipino masses. Thank you and good afternoon. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the uh, speech of uh, the lady from uh, Party List uh, Kabataan to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Is there any objection? The chair is done. The motion is approved. <coughs> Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to our rules, I move that we amend the result of the roll call earlier today to consider the representative Arlene Arcelias, who was attending the bicameral conference on the disagreeing provisions of the House Bill Number 6016 and Senate Bill Number 1466 as present. So move, Mr. Speaker. Is there an objection? The chair is none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the uh, lady from Party List Gabriela, the Honorable Amy Diesos. 
Honorable for her sponsorship, for her privileged speech. Honorable Emmy De Jesus of Gabriela Partilis is hereby recognized. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mga kapwa kinatawan, magandang hapon. Itong Sabado, ikapito ng Oktubre, nirakahan ng iba't ibang union at organisasyong pangmanggagawa ang pandaigdigang araw para sa disenteng trabaho o World Day for Decent Work ng pagkilo sa iba't ibang bansa mula India, Europa hanggang Indonesia. Taunang okasyon ito para erehistro ang panawagang disenteng trabaho sa harap ng pag-impis ng halaga ng sahod, paglaganap ng kontraktual na pagawa at pagdaos-dos ng pangkabuang kalidad ng kabuhayan sa buong mundo, bunga ng hampas ng neoliberal na globalisasyon. Sa konteksto ng Pilipinas, hindi mahirap maunawaan kung bakit kagyat na usapin ang disenteng trabaho at nakabubuhay na sahod. Sa pinakahuling ulat ng World Trade Organization mismo, nasa 70% ng mga kabuong bilang ng trabaho sa ating bansa ay nasa informal na sektor. Isa ito sa pinakamataas na antas ng informalization of work sa buong daigdig. Ibig sabihin, pito sa sampung manggagawang Pilipino ay walang permanenteng trabaho, walang regular at disente na kita, at walang anumang benepisyo. Kabilang dito ang mga maninda, nagpipedicab, nangangalahig ng basura, home-based na mananahin ng sapatos at bag, naguuling, at mga unpaid family workers sa bukid at plantasyon. Kadalasan, sila rin ang mukha ng mga biktima ng gera kontra droga. Sa mga komunidad halimbawa sa Kamaynilaan, ang karaniwang trabaho ng mga tatay ay sa construction kung saan kadalas ay below minimum ang sahod at project-based ang trabaho. Ang mga kababaihan naman ay nagbabalat ng bawang, nangangalahig ng basura o di kaya naglalako ng samot-saring produkto sa bangketa. Bagamat sinasabi nating marangal ang mga trabahong ito, paano nga ba matatawag itong marangal kung ito'y walang katiyakan, irregular, at maliit ang kita at walang benepisyong makukuha mula rito? Hindi ba't kakatuwa na sa kabila ng sinasabing ganansya, Mula sa ilang dekadang pag-iral ng globalisasyon, ito tayo sa kalagayang paparami ng paparami ang mga nasa informal na sektor habang lumiliit ang bilang ng regular na trabaho. Nasa kalagayan tayo kung saan wala pa rin pambansang industriya at atrasado pa rin ang agrikultura. Gustong ibahagi ng representasyong ito ang konkretong kalagayan sa tondo. Humigit kulok Humigit kumulang, isang libong tambakero, magugulat kayo sa termino, ang bigla na lamang tinanggal sa trabaho ng Philippine Eco. Ito po yung nagtatambak ng basura at sila rin yung nangangalahig. Gutom na ang inabot ng pamilya nila na umaasa sa pangangalakal sa loob ng tambakan ng mga ng sampung araw ng walang trabaho. Inagaw pa sa kanila ang tanging kabubuhay ng kanilang pamilya. Mula sa aktual na kasong ito, Mahirap ang pangarap na umaasenso na ang mga manggagawang Pilipino sa ilalim ng administrasyong ito. Samantala, ang mga tinatawag na wage and salary workers ay patuloy na humaharap sa salot na kontraktualisasyon na ipinatutupad sa iba't ibang forma. Sa halip na ito pa rin ang pangakong wakasan ang kontraktualisasyon, Tila binigyan pa ng Administrasyong Duterte ng digal na bihis ang kontraktual na pagawa sa pamamagitan ng Department of Labor Department Order 174. Alinsunod dito sa neoliberal na agenda para tiyakin na mura at hindi unyonisado ang lakas pagawa sa bansa para umano makaakit ng dayuhang pamumuhunan. Namang mayagpag pa rin ang shoe mark ang SM, ang dambuhalang contractual king na pag-aari ni Henry C. Labing apat na taon matapos ang makasaysayang welga ng mga manggagawa ng SM sa pangungunan ng sandiga ng mga manggagawa sa Shumart. Mula sa halos 20,000 kontraktual noong 
umabot na ang bilang sa higit 150,000 nitong 2016. At karamihan sa mga kontraktual sa SM ay mga kababaihan. Sa kabila nito, patuloy na pinabubulaan na ng SM ang ganitong paratang at tinatawag na short term o seasonal workers ang mga kontraktual para lamang makalusot. Nagtatrabaho ang mga manggagawa ng SM sa loob ng siyam o higit pang oras ng walang bayad. Laganap din ang tinatawag na OTTY o overtime thank you o dibayad na overtime. Wala rin night differential pay ang mga manggagawang lumalampas sa a Alas gis ng gabi ang oras ng trabaho bukod sa marami pang paglabag sa karapatang pangmanggagawa. Matagal nang iginigiit ng representasyong ito sa pamamagitan ng isang house resolution na tingnan na ang Shumart bilang promotor ng kontraktualisasyon sa bansa at nararapat lamang na maglunsad na ng protesta ang mga mall ni Henry C. sa buong bansa at ilantad ang nakaba nakakabahalang mapanupil na kalagayan sa loob ng Shumart Mall, SM Malls. Ang masahol pa, nakaambang pahabain pa ang oras ng paggawa sa pamamagitan ng isinusulong na compressed work week. Babawasan ang araw ng paggawa, pero babasagin ang napagtagumpayang o sa oras na paggawa ng kilusang paggawa. Nangangahulugan ito ng pagtapya sa sahod at benepisyo ng mga manggagawa, pagpapasahol ng mga panganib sa kalusugan at paghawa ng daan tungo sa mas matinding kontraktualisasyon. Regular man o kontraktual o informal, papatindi ang nararanasang hagupit ng mga manggagawa mula sa pagsirit ng presyo ng mga bilihin, mula sa presyo ng gasolina, LPG, sardinas, pamasahe sa taxi, hanggang sa singil sa kuryente at tubig. Sinasabing pinakamataas ang inflation rate nitong September sa loob ng nakaraang limang buwan. Pero hindi naman umaagapay ang sahod ng mga manggagawa. Ang kakarampot na 21 peso umento sa minimum wage ng mga manggagawa ng NCR ay madaling nilamon ng sunod-sunod na taas presyo nitong mga nakaraang araw. At dahil itinataguyod pa rin ng kasalukuyang gobyerno ang deregulasyon ng langis at privatisasyon ng mga batayang serbisyo at utilidad, tsak, lalong lulusawin ng panibagong yugto ng taas presyo ang barya-baryang sahod ng mga manggagawa. Tsak, na lalong mahihirapan ang mga nanay na pagkasyahin ang napakaliit na kita ng pamilya at masasadlak na naman sa malalim na utang para lamang matugunan ang mga batayang pangangailangan. Mr. Speaker, naniniwala ang representasyong ito na hindi matitiyak ang disenting trabaho sa tinatawag na, quote, Duterte Nomics, na nakasandig sa multimitrilyong infrastruktura kung saan panandalian ng trabaho, mababa ang kita, at vulnerable sa panganib na pangkalusugan ang mga manggagawa. Sa nalalapit na pagpupulong ng mga, Pilipi ng mga pinuno ng Association of Southeast Asian Nation o ASEAN dito sa Pilipinas, tiyak na muling agresibong itutulak ang todong liberalisasyon ng kalakalan, privatisasyon ng mga serbisyong panlipunan, at deregulasyon ng pamilihan ng paggawa at mga susing kalakal. Subalit hindi ito ang kailangan ng mga kababaihan at manggagawa. Bakit uuliti ng mga patakarang neoliberal na bigo at naipakita na na nabigo iaahon ng mga Pilipino mula sa malawak na kawalan ng trabaho at kahirapan? Ang tanging transformasyon ng ekonomiya ay magaganap sa pamamagitan lamang ng pambansang industrialisasyon at tunay na reforma sa lupa. Mr. Speaker, hinahamon ng kapulungan ito Nadinggin ang matagal ng karaingan ng mga manggagawa. Regular at disenting trabaho, makabuluhang dagdag sahod, pambansang minimum na sahod, at pagkilala sa karapatang mag-union ng mga manggagawa. At kung patuloy na magbubulag-bulagan ang gobyernong ito sa mga nabanggit na panawagan, 
Huwag ikagulat ng Pangulo ang mas malalim na pagsadsad ng kanyang ratings at higit na pagdami ng protesta sa lansangan ng mamamayan. Ito lamang, Mr. Speaker, at magandang hapon. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Representative Emi Diazus of the Partilis Gabriela to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Any objection? The Chair is done. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we have uh, some designations on uh, BICAM conferees. I move that we designate the Honorable Representative Ariel Casilao as additional member of the Bicameral Conference Committee on the Disagreeing Provisions of House Bill No. 5670 and Senate Bill No. 1465 regarding the Free Irrigation Service Act. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Any objection? The Chair is none. Representative Ariel Casilao is designated as one of the members of the Bicameral Conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the Disagreeing Provision of House Bill No. 5670 and Senate Bill 1465 regarding the Free Irrigation Services Act. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we are in receipt of a message from the Senate informing the House that the Senate passed with amendments House Bill No. 4942 entitled an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Pudu in the municipality of Natunin Mountain Province. We have been advised that the Committee on Local Government, sponsor of the said uh, House Bill, as well as the author thereof, have no objections to the amendments introduced thereto by the Senate. Mr. Speaker, in accordance with our rules, I move that we concur with the Senate amendments to the House Bill number 4942. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Any objection? The no. Chair is none. The motion to concur with the Senate amendments to the House Bill number 4942 is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that the gentleman from the Partilist Akbayan, the Honorable Representative Tom S. Villarin, with his uh, speech entitled Family Settlement, be recognized to avail of the privileged hour. Representative Tom Villarin from Partilist Akbayan is recognized to avail his privilege. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, colleagues, I rise on a personal and collective privilege. Noong magdeklara po si Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte na hindi magkakaroon ng mga demolisyon ng walang relokasyon, libu-libong pamilya ng mga maralitang tagalungsod ang umasa. Umasa po sila na hindi sila basta-basta palalayasin mula sa lugar ng kanilang kinatitirikan. Umasa po sila na kung sila man ay paalisin mula sa kanilang mga tirahan, tatratuhin silang na may dangal at respeto sa kanilang pagkatao. Higit sa lahat, umasa po sila na mayroong sapat, disente at abot kayang pabahay na naghihintay sa kanila, sa kanilang paglilipatan, malayo sa peligro pero malapit sa trabaho at serbisyo. Iginigiit ko, Mr. Speaker, na ayon sa ating konstitusyon, ilalim sa Article 13, Sections 9 and 10, na malinaw na yung karapatan para sa bahay ay iginagawad po natin sa ating mga kababayan Pilipino. Subalit po, mukhang umaasa ang ating mga kababayan sa wala. Nitong nakaraang ikadalawamputlima ng Agosto, may higit sa isang daang pamilya ang pinalayas sa kanilang mga tahanan at pinagkaitan ng tamang proseso ng dinimolis ng mga otoridad ang kanilang mga tirahan sa barangay North Bay Boulevard 
sa lungsod ng Navotas. Isiniwalat po ng mga residente na sinorpresa sila ng mga kinauukulan dahil ni walang konsultasyon at nakahandang relokasyon para sa kanilang paglilipatan. Bago mangyari ang demolisyon, nagkaroon ng isang konferensya noong ikawalo ng Hunyo. Subalit sa nasabing paghaharap o konferensya, walang mga kinatawan mula sa HUDCC, NHA, Commission on Human Rights, para tiyakin ang kapakanan ng mga residente. Walang maayos na konsultasyon, walang relokasyon, pero natuloy pa rin ang demolisyon. Malinaw po, ginong speaker, sa ating batas at pulisiya, dadaan ho lahat sa pre-demolition conference pag usapin ho na meron ho tayong ililikas na ating mga kababayan. Dapat merong klarong relokasyon na katanggap-tanggap sa mga informal settler families at prioridad ang on-site, in-city or near-city relocation. Isa pang kaso ang makikita natin dito mismo sa lungsod ng Quezon City. Hinaharap ngayon ng mga kababayan natin ang banta ng demolisyon ng walang siguradong relokasyon. Sa kabila ng isang verbal notice noong ikalima ng Setyembre, may isang daan at siya na pong pamilya sa barangay Talayan, San Francisco del Monte, ang maaring palayasin sa kanilang mga tirahan tungo sa malalayong lugar tulad ng Rizal at Bulacan. Bagamat pumayag ang Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission, doon po sa pagdinig sa kanilang budget dito sa Kamara na may ibigay sa ating mga informal settler families ang 30-meter easement para sa on-city resettlement, tinanggihan ho ito ng Quezon City Government sa pamamagitan ni Ginoong Tadeo Palma. Nandito po yung ating mga informal settler families. Kasama ho natin ngayon sa gallery. Bagaman merong nakalaang relokasyon para sa mga residente, sabi ng Quezon City Government, malinaw naman na walang kwenta ang relokasyon kung wala namang sapat na oportunidad para sa trabaho at hanap buhay. Gayon din, walang akses sa mga batayang servisyong pampubliko. Ginoong Speaker, karaniwang isinasagawa ang demolisyon dahil ang ating mga informal settler families ay nasa danger zones. Dumadami din ang mga tinatawag na court order demolition dahil biglaan ding inaangkin ng mga may-ari ng mga lupa o korporasyon ang mga matagal ng abandonadong private lands at biglaan na merong court-ordered demolitions. Ginoong speaker, mga kasama, pwede nating isa-isahin ang mga kaso ng demolisyon na nangyari ngayon ilalim sa Administrasyong Duterte. Sa ating mga kaibigan at mismo sa ating mga distrito at komunidad, kapansin-pansin na nanganganib ang seguridad sa paninirahan ng ating mga kababayan. Kaya naman po, <coughs> ang akbayan ang isa sa nangunguna para itulak dito sa kamera ang on-site, in-city, and near-city relocation program na sa ngayon ay pumasa na sa third reading. Umaasa din po tayo na maipasa sa kapulungang ito ang Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development na siya sanang pangunahing ahensya na magpaplano, magtataguyod ng people's planning, siya din ang mga ngasiwa sa financing, production at sustainable urban renewal and development para ho sa ating mga informal settler families. Medyo nakakalungkot po, ginoong speaker, na nitong nakaraang budget hearing, nalaman ho natin na nabawasan ang kasalukuyang budget para sa pabahay. Ngayon, ginoong speaker, 
higit na 5.6 milyong Pilipino ang walang disenteng pabahay at mga ngailangan po tayo ng 100 billion bawat taon sa susunod na mga limang taon para matugunan ang ganitong backlog para sa pabahay. Lingid ho sa kaalaman <coughs> ng nakakarami, meron hong tatlong klaseng sistema para sa pabahay. Una na po rito, meron tayong socialized housing program. Meron ho tayong economic housing program. At ang pangatlo ay yung tinatawag nating low-cost housing program. Ilalim ho sa socialized housing program, ito po ay uh, iginagawad po natin ito, 450,000 pesos and below, doon ho sa mga pamilya na nangangailangan ng pabahay. Sa economic housing, kailangan ng 650,000 pesos. 450,000 hanggang 1.25 million ang cost ng isang economic housing unit. At yung pangatlo, low-cost housing na kung saan from 1.25 million hanggang 3 million ang halaga. Sa ganitong pagsisegment ng ating pangangailangan sa pabahay, Mr. Speaker, mga kasama, 23% po sa sinasabi nating nangangailangan ng disenteng pabahay ay hindi ho talaga makaka-afford ng mismong sinasabi nating socialized housing program. Ibig sabihin sa 23% na ito sa bilang ng total bilang na 5.6 million, marami-rami ring mga kababayan natin, almost one fourth ang nangangailangan ng pabahay pero hindi ho nila kaya mismo ang tinatabi nating low cost uh, yung sinasabi nating socialized housing program kaya nangangailangan po ng iba't ibang pamamaraan ng sistemang pabahay at ang pamamaraan na yan ay marami na hong mga panukala lalong-lalo na po yung sinasabi natin na dapat merong people's planning na kailangan para sa pabahay. Sa people's planning po, mas pinapakinggan natin yung mismong daing, pinapakinggan ho natin yung ideya ng ating mga informal settler families kung paano nila masusolusyonan at matutugunan yung pangangailangan sa pabahay. So sa ganitong sistema, marami na hong umusbong ng mga alternatibo Gaya ng tinatawag nating High Density Housing Program, meron ho tayong Public Rental Housing Program, meron ho tayong mga kooperatibang housing project at yung Community Mortgage Programs. Marami pa hong posible na mga pamamaraan na kung saan yung financing at production ng mga housing units ay magiging affordable para ho sa ating mga kababayan. Ang kailangan lang ho, kailangan makinig ang ating pamahalaan at makasama ho natin yung ating mga informal settler families dun sa pagplano nung sinasabi nating affordable and decent housing policies. Kaya, ginoong speaker, <coughs> mga kasama, hanggang ngayon po ay patuloy na umaasa yung atin hong mga maralitang tagalunsod, mga informal settler families na sana tugunan ng ating pamahalaan yung pangangailangan ng affordable and decent housing program. Umaasa ho sila na bilang mga policy makers makatakda po tayo ng relevant, urgent na pagtugon sa lumalaking pangangailangan sa housing para sa ating mga kababayan. Hindi po sila nawawalan at kailanman hindi ho uh, masasabi natin mawawalan ng pag-asa sapagkat ho sa tingin natin ito hong problema sa pabahay ay nakaugat din sa gusto nating pananaw sa isang kaunlaran 
para sa ating mga kababayan. Ang sinasabi nating sustainable development. Maraming salamat po, ginong speaker, at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Representative Tom S. Villarin of uh, Partilist Akbayan to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Any objection? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration and third reading of the House Bill Number 6394. For this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any, ob any objection? The Chair is none. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the bill number 6394. Thereafter, call the roll for uh, nominal voting on third reading. House Bill Number 6394, an act declaring the Mayon Volcano Natural Park in the province of Palbay as a protected area and providing for its management. Roll call of members, consideration House Bill Number 6394, Abaya, Abayon, Abilianosa, Abu, Abueg, Acheron, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agarao, Agabao, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez France, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angaro Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achenza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batocabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Villasiano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bolilla, Bondoc, Portado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Meravida, Rosas, Bulutbegtang, Cagas, Calderon, Calixorbiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Caso France, Caso Pedinil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serafica, Cerilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co, Coanco, Collantes, Cortes, Cortuna, Cosalan, Pisologo, Cuba, Cuaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, De Vera, De Pensor, Del Mar, De Rosario, De Los Montalla, De Maporo, Dula, De Maporo, Calid, Duavit, Durano, Di, Elago, Enverga, Erize, Erigel, Ermita Buain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Ferriol, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Fentebella, Garbin, Garcia Gwendolyn, Garcia Jose, Garcia Albano, Gary Richard, Gary Sharon, Gasataya, Gachalian, Heron, Goana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Alexandria, Gonzalez Arredon, Gonzalez Fernando, Goreseta, Gullas, Hernandez, Herrera D, Hopper, Halosos, Xavier, Co Conjun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lasatin, Liachon, Li, Limgaichong, Lobdegat, Lopez Benur, Lopez Carlo, Lopez Manuel, Loyola, Magpaglaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangodadato Suarto, Mangodadato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariño, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Meliana, Mending, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles, Jericho, Nograles, Carlo, Nolasco, Nunez, Malignaon, Wominal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega, Pablo, Ortega, Bini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Pimisia, Sagabas, Kimbo, Radasa, Ramirezato, Ramos, Relampagos, Revilla, Roapuno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodriguez, Isidro, Rodriguez, Maximo, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Romaldo, Roquejari, Roquerogelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salon, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento Cesar, Sarmiento Edgar, Sevillano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansig Estrita, Swansing Horacio, Suarez, Alvarado, Tambutig, Tanangelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Sherni, Tejada, Teves, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Talentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Torabi, Nataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Barreta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Vilarde, Velasco, Velasco, Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villapete, Villanueva, Villaraza, Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Yulago, Yap Arthur, Yap Melesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Zamora Marcamen, Zamora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri.
With 217 affirmative votes, no negative vote, no abstention, House Bill 1694 is approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of the third reading of House Bill number 6512. For this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The chair is none. The motion is approved. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of uh, House Bill 6512. Thereafter, uh, call the roll for nominal voting on uh, for third and final reading. House Bill number 6512, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Timbabawan in the municipality of Tungawan, province of Sambuanga, Sibugay. Roll call of members consideration House Bill number 6512. Abaya, Abayon, Abellanosa, Abu, Abweg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agarao, Agabao, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez France, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achensa, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagiching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawin, Batukabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte Sir Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertis, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bolilla, Bundok, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maravida, Brosas, Bulutbegtang, Cagas, Calderon, Calixorbiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Casa France, Casa Fedenil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serafica, Cerilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co, Cuanco, Colliantes, Cortes, Cortuna, Cosalan, Quesologo, Cuba, Quaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, De Vera, Defensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, Del Oso, de Oso Montaña, De Maporo, Abdullah, De Maporo, Calid, Duavit, Durano, Di, Elago, Enverga, Erice, Erigel, Ermita Buayen, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Ferriol, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Pentebella, Garbin, García Gwendolyn, García Jose, García Albano, García... Gary Richard, Gary Sharon, Gasataya, Gachalian, Herold, Goana Cristina, Go, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Alexandria, Gonzalez Aurelio Dong, Gonzalez Fernando, Gorseta, Gullas, <coughs> Hernandez Herrera D, Hopper, Halosos, Xavier, Co Conjun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lakman, Lanete, Laugan, Lasatin, Lechon, Li, Lim Kaichong, Lobrigat, Lopez Benu, Lopez Carlo, Lopez Manuel, Loyola, Magpaglaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudadato Suarto, Mangudadato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Meliana, Mending, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Nobel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Carlo, Nolasco, Nunez Malignaon, Waminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Vini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Pimichin, Sagabas, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirez Sato, Ramos, Relampago, Sevilla, Rawapuno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodriguez Isidro, Rodriguez Maximo, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roque Harry, Roque Roelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbarias, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salon, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento Cesar, Sarmiento Edgar, Sevillano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Juan Sing Estrellita, Juan Sing Horacio, Suarez, Elvarado, Tambuting, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Cherny, Tejada, Tevez, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Talentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Torabi, Nataman, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Bareta, Vargas, Vargas, Alfonso, Velarde, Velasco, Velasco, Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villafuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza, Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Yulago, Yap Arthur, Yap Melesio, Yap Victor, you, Samora Mar Carmen, Samora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri. We, 217 members, goes to affirmative, affirmative, no negative, no abstentions. House Bill 6512 is a full one third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of third reading of House Bill number 6522. 
For this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of House Bill 6522. Thereafter, call the roll for nominal voting on third and final reading. House Bill Number 6522, an, an act establishing a national science high school in Barangay Bagumbayan, Balanga City, Province of Bataan, to be known as Balanga City National Science High School, and appropriating funds therefore. To all call up members, consideration House Bill Number 6522. Abaya, Abayon, Abilenosa, Abu, Abweg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agaraw, Agabao, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez France, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Abison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achensa, Aumentado, Bagaw, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batokabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bulilla, Bundok, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maravida, Brosas, Bulut Pectang, Cagas, Calderon, Calixtrobiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Castro France, Castro Pedinil, Catampo, Cayetano, Celeste, Serapica, Cerilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co. Cuanco, Collantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Cosalan, Pisologo, Cuba, Coresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, De Vera, Defensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Loso Montalla, De Maporo Abdullah, De Maporo Khalid, Duabit, Durano, D, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Erigel, Ermita Buain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Verdone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer, Juliet, Ferrer, Luis, Ferriol, Floirendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Fentebella, Garbin, García, Gwendolyn, Garcia Jose, Garcia Albano, Gary Richard, Gary Sharon, Gasataya, Gachelian, Heron, Guana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Alexandria, Gonzalez Avelio Dong, Gonzalez Fernando, Guruseta, Gulia, Hernandez, Herrera D, Hofer, Halosos, Xavier, Co Conjun, Labad Labad, Laxon, Lagman, Laneve, Laugan, Lasatin, Liachon, Lilim Caichong, Lobigat, Lopez Benur, Lopez Carlo, Lopez Manuel, Loyola, Magpagalaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudodato Suarco, Mangodato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Meliana, Mending, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles, Jericho, Nograles, Carlo, Nolasco, Nunez, Malignaon, Waminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Henry, Ortega, Pablo, Ortega, Vini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Primicia, Sagabas, Kimbo, Radasa, Ramirezato, Ramos, Lampagos, Revilla, Rawapuno, Robes, Racomora, Rodriguez, Isidro, Rodriguez, Maximo, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roquejari, Roque Rogelio, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salon, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento Cesar, Sarmiento Edgar, Sabellano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansing Estelita, Swansing Horacio, Suarez, Barado, Tambunting. Actually, Nur Miswari then convinced Libya to shift their support from the traditional Muslim elites to the Moro National Liberation Front. This significantly established the MNLF as an organization to lead the Muslim insurgency in the Republic of the Philippines. The MNLF rebellion is founded on its ideology as stated in their manifesto, which espoused an independent state, the Bangsamoro Republic, for all people of the Southern Philippines Mindanao, and Palawan. With the help of military advisors from Libya and Malaysia, the MNLF employed guerrilla tactics against the armed forces of the Philippines. The successful tactics employed by the MNLF forced the national government to negotiate on January 1975. In addition, international pressure from the Organization of the Islamic Conference, the OIC, urged the Philippine government to reach a political settlement with the MNLF. On December 23, 1976, the MNLF and the Philippine government signed the Tripoli Agreement. The agreement subjected to a plebiscite 10 of 13 provinces to be incorporated in the autonomous region. At the time, the terms were not acceptable to the MNLF and led to the collapse of the peace talks. Internal squabbling with the MNLF ranks led to breakaway groups such as the MILF, MNLF reformists, 
and tribal factions of the MNLF. Coupled by military losses from AFP operations, Miswari was forced to shift his demands from full independence to regional autonomy. Miswari attempted to negotiate with the Corazon Aquino administration, but failed. The administration instead worked with local politicians to create the Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao Republic Act No. 6734 by virtue of a referendum for inclusion in the ARMM. The MNLF was not consulted and therefore opposed the ARMM. During the Ramos administration, the peace talks restarted with the governments of Indonesia and Libya as mediators. This ultimately led to the Jakarta Accord signed on September 2, 1996, which officially ended the MNLF's fight against the government. The Jakarta Accord included accelerated development, an investment fund with special zones of peace and development, integration of MNLF combatants to the AFP, an amendment to the ARMM law, and the political installation of Nur Meswari as governor of the ARMM. Now, <clears throat> 35 years later, we find ourselves negotiating peace with another armed group, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. In his speech of the framework agreement with the MILF, President Benigno Aquino called for a new political entity, the Bangsa Moro, and described the ARMM as a field experiment. Thus, his administration initiated change in the Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao. On June 30, 2011, President Benigno Aquino signed Republic Act 10150, providing for the synchronization of elections in the ARMM with the national and local elections. Section 3 of the Republic Act provided the President the power to appoint a regional governor, regional vice governor, and members of the Regional Legislating Assembly. The Act to appoint officials for the ARMM instead of allowing incumbents to hold over their office until the rescheduled elections was perceived by many as a violation of the spirit of autonomy. Malacanang defended Republic Act 10150 by stating that Mindanao deserves a clean state. The autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao has become a corrupt and oppressive institution especially under the Ampatuan administration and evident with the occurrence of the Maguindanao massacre on November 3, 2009. President Aquino's intention was to rid the region of regional leaders and their command votes as a means to revitalize the democratic process within the ARMM. The president ordered an audit and found ghost projects, ghost schools, ghost teachers, and non-remittance of GSIS premiums for government employees. The objective of the postponement of the armed election was to install professional and competent people to correct the governance defect in the ARMM system and institutionalize reform. Malacanang's anointed one was former Anak Mindanao Party List Representative Mujib Hataman. As Malacanang's declaration after Malacanang's declaration of arm as a field experiment six years ago, I'd like to share with the public the presentation of the 2018 budget deliberations of arm's budget in the Committee of Appropriations to provide a snapshot of what arm is today. Let me start with the historical budget of arm. From 1991 to 2013, the arm budget has a gradual increase in relation to the growth of the nation's economy. The most important aspect of the graph is how it illustrates the sharp increase in the budget during the Hataman administration from 2013 to 2017. Concurrently, the arm percentage share of the national budget fluctuates from 0.48% to 1.62%. The Hataman administration received the largest share of the national budget in comparison to other armed governors. This is evidence of the significant financial backing of the Aquino administration to regional governor Mujib Hataman as a means to institutionalize governance reforms. After all, 
you cannot have governance reforms without budgetary support. Now, with full financial backing from the Aquino administration, one must ask, what happened to the field experiment that is the ARMM? The following accomplishments have been presented in the 2018 ARMM budget briefing. One, they have achieved ISO certification for the Office of the Regional Governor and TESDA. Two, six LGUs were awarded with the SGLG on 2016. These were the province of Maguindanao, Lamitan City in Basilan, municipalities of North Upi and Parang in Maguindanao, Wao in Lanao del Sur, and Olo in Sulu. There are now 25 potential recipients of the SGLG in 2017. Three, the armed administrations prior to Hataman racked up debt with GSIS. 80% of armed employees are public school teachers. The current administration of ARM settled more than $2 billion worth of debt ed, armed debt to G GSIS. Four, they succeeded in ghost-busting in debt ed. Ghost-busting refers to the data manipulation of the Department of Education's Enhanced Basic Information System. The enrollment number of students are bloated with the objective to increase the school's MOOE. 76,423 non-existent students were found for the school year 2015 to 2016. Five, local revenue collection increased from 737,680 in 2011 to 1 billion 732,000, 1 million 732,880 in 2016. Six, the administration actively activated previously non-functional policy making bodies such as the Regional Economic Development Planning Board, Regional Peace and Order Council, and Crisis Management Committee. Seven, in arms bid to have a more transparent government, they established database management programs such as eARM, eFarm, eTAPS, RPMS, and so forth. Eight, the Regional Human Rights Commission and the ARM Darul Ifta were operationalized by Muslim Mindanao Act 288 and Muslim Mindanao Act 323, respectively. Nine, the ARM strongly supports the peace process with the MILF and has prepared for its transition to the Bank Samoro. Ten, they passed good governance conditions that led to the 2014 performance-based bonus and the 2015 performance enhancement incentive, incentives. 11. The administration settled 97 out of 277 redo or blood feud between warring clans for the year 2017. 12. The establishment of a 24-7 operation center in response to the Marawi crisis through Arm Heart or Humanitarian Emergency Action Response Team, which was established by Arm Executive Order No. 11, signed on March 2013. 13. Arm Governor Hatam Hataman implemented a special program called Arm Helps, which incorporates health, education, livelihood, peace and governments, and synergy with non-armed partners to converge for a more focused barangay intervention program by the government. Programs include birthing clinics, barangay health stations, medicine, water and sanitation projects, daycare centers, community learning centers, fish ports, livelihood projects for cooperatives. To date, they have covered more than 400 barangays. 14, the Hataman administration is implementing the Arm Bridge Program. This is another special project that stands for Bank Samoro Regional Inclusive Development and Growth of Growth and Empowerment. The program addresses the most marginalized in the ARMM. The model empowers indigent families by providing them with four basic needs, food, water, housing, and electricity. The program has been implemented to 5,600 families. These families receive housing with solar panels, a community water system, and community garden along with other livelihood assistance. 15. The Pollock Freeport in Mag Maguindanao generated almost 30 million in income for 2016. 16. Fishery production increased and ARM became the number one fishery producer in the country with more than 800,000 metric tons in 2016. 17. Tourist destinations in Maguindanao and Tawi-Tawi were promoted and increased tourist arrivals 
to more than 200,000 in 2016. 18, increased arm investments, totaling to more than 15 billion from 2013 to 2017. Lastly, infrastructure development was only given a 1 billion budget in 2012 compared to a 10 billion budget in 2017. This comes with stringent and innovative reforms under DPWH arm. There are 11 reforms accomplishments in DPWH arm that were implemented. One, no lump sum appropriations and regraveling re graveling projects in the Public Works Act. Two, clean and honest competitive bidding. Three, procurement of 62 units of heavy equipment and 19 project monitoring vehicles. Four, development of the expanded armed roads mapping and management system that establishes a database containing information on roads, connectivity conditions, and create a network between DPWH Arm Regional Office and its eight DEOs. Five, the creation of a system of transparency in project implementation by utilizing Google Earth mapping, geotagging, and drone surveillance technology that are all accessible to the public via website and social media. Six, conducted feasibility studies for high-impact water supply projects, roads, and drainage systems. Seven, the creation of the information, communication, and technology management division to oversee implementation of all IT systems in ARM DPWH and its eight DEOs. Eight, renovation of the regional offices, district engineering office, and area equipment service buildings. Nine, reform of the DPWH organization and personnel. personnel. Ten, enhancing the capability of ARM DPWH by creating new offices such as Basilan DEO with 45 positions, Lanao del Sur, second DEO with 54 positions, and Maguindanao, first DEO with 54 positions. 11, DPWH ARM is on the road to becoming ISO 9001 certified and are also implementing <coughs> other resource programs to be more effective as an organization. <coughs> The autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao today is a far cry when it was declared a failed experiment six years ago. The reason we should be concerned is because failure in arm affects all of us in Mindanao. If there is a high incidence of poverty and a culture of corruption, then there exists a socio-economic environment that is the breeding ground for internal security threats such as insurgents and terrorism. What the incumbent administration showed me is that governance in arm can work. But the critical ingredients for true change to happen in Muslim Mindanao is the financial commitment by the national government to fund key socio-economic programs and good leaders who are willing to institutionalize public service. Arm was called by President Benigno Aquino as a failed experiment. I disagree. The failure in the ARMM experiment was not the arm. The failure in the, is in the national governments and its inability to deliver its promise to the people in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. One example is what happened in the 2017 budget process. 8 billion worth of infrastructure was successfully carved out of the ARM budget. 8 billion was transferred to DPWH. But when the budget was scrutinized by the Senate, Senator Ping Langson questioned the 8 billion transfer of funds from ARM to DP, DPWH and label, labeled it as pork barrel. News circulated in mass media and social media of Senator, Senator Langson's findings. It was then converted to the 8 billion fund for CHED's free tertiary education tuition. This is why the people of ARM clamor for change. It is difficult to get the national leadership to sympathize with the needs of the regional government. Eight billion worth of development funds was taken out of the ARM budget and converted into the free tuition program. If the good senator had a problem with transfer of funds by the House of Representatives, why did they just not return it to the ARMM? especially since it is a region wrought with poverty and in need of development. Speaker, colleagues, I am not from the arm, but what transpired in the 2017 budget was unjust in my opinion. So I appeal to Secretary Jokno to restore the 8 billion intended for the ARMM this coming budget cycle in preparation for the 2019 fiscal year. I have learned a lot as Vice Chairman 
of appropriations for the ARM budget. The presentations given in our committee shattered my prejudice against ARM as a fatally corrupt institution. But still, there are still some lingering concerns that have piqued my curiosity, in which I implore Congress to take action by virtue of the following resolutions filed. One, a resolution directing the Committee of Muslim Affairs to mediate between the Department of Budget and Management and the ARM to further increase the budget of ARM's line agencies. The budget allocated for the regional departments in ARM, such as DILG, DSWD, DOT, CDA, lack program funds. All they are practically given is budget for salary and office expenses, limiting their capability to serve their constituents. I hope this problem can be explored and resolved in the Committee of Muslim and Affairs. Two, a resolution directing the appropriate committee to assess the administrative relationship between DepEd Arm and DepEd Central Office. Quality education ensures a more, econom more economic options for the next generation. There have been reports of unavailable funds such as chalk allowance, teacher's items, and implementation of certain DepEd programs in DepEd Arm. I hope the issues can be resolved in the appropriate committee for the benefit of the teachers and students in the ARMM. With the urgency of the Bangsamoro Basic Law as priority legislation, the existence of ARM is close to an end. The ARM has been called a failed experiment, but over the last six years, it has been given a chance to reform. We can learn a lot from the ARM experience as the government transitions to the Bank Samoro. I hope the House can revisit what caused the ARM to fail when deliberating the Bank Samoro Basic Law. Otherwise, we may be simply changing a failed experiment with another experiment. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you, Speaker. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker. I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Dimapuro to the Committee on Rules for its uh, appropriate action. Any objection? The Chair here is none. The motion is approved. Majority Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we terminate the privilege hour. Any objection? The Chair here is none. The motion is approved. Majority Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on third reading of House Bill Number 6465. For this purpose, may I request the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The Chair is none. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of House Bill 6465. Thereafter, call the roll for uh, nominal voting on third and final reading. House Bill No. 6465, and now converting the Northwestern Mindanao State College of Science and Technology in the city of Tangub, province of Samis Occidental, into a state university to be known as University of Northwestern, Northwestern Mindanao, and appropriating funds, therefore. Roll call of members, consideration of House Bill No. 6465. Abaya, Abayon, Abidianosa, Abu, Abweg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Costa Alba, Ajong, Advincula, Agarao, Agabao, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez France, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Argones, Arbison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achenza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagaching, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batukabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Pilisiano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Biron, Bonilla, Bundok, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maravida, Brosas, Bulut Begtang, Cagas, Calderon, Calixorbiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Castro Trans, Castro Pedinil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serafica, Cerilles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co, Coanco, Collantes, Cortes, Cortuna, Cosalan, Pesologo, Cuba, Quaresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, De Vera, Defensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Los Montalla, De Moporo, Dula, De Moporo, Khalid, 
Duabit Durano D. Elago Enverga Erise Erigel Ermita Boain Escudero Espina Espino Estrella Eusebio Ibardone Fariñas Fernando Ferrer Juliet Ferrer Luis Ferriol Floirendo Flores Fortun Fortuno Pentebella Garbin García Gwendolyn García José García Albano Gary Richard Gary Sharon Gasataya Gachalian Heron Guana Cristina Go Mark Gomez Gonzaga González Alexandria González Aurelio Dom González Fernando, Guriseta, Gullas Hernández Herrera D, Hofer Halasos, Xavier, Cocunjun, Labandabad, Laxon, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lasatin, Liachon, Lilim Caichong, Lobrigat, López Benur, López Carlos, López Manuel, Loyola, Mapacalaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudodato Suarto, Mangudodato Sajid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariño, Marqués, Martínez, Matugas, Meliana, Mendín, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles, Jericho, Nograles, Carlo, Nolasco, Núñez, Malañao, Nuaminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong Edwin, Ong Hendy, Ortega, Pablo, Ortega, Vini, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Pandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Pimisi, Sagabas, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirez, Sato, Ramos, Elampago, Sevilla, Robopuno, Robes, Rocomora, Rodríguez, Isidro, Rodriguez Máximo, Román, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roquejari, Roque Rogelio, Sagdalan, Sagarbaría, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salón, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento César, Sarmiento Edgar, Sevillano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Suancín Estelita, Suancín Horacio, Suárez, El Barado, Tiembontín, Tan Angelina, Tan Milagrosa, Tan Cherny, Tejada, Tevez, Chanco, Tin, Tiño, Tolentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Torabi, Natamán, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Bareta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velarde, Velasco, Velasco Catera, Veloso, Vergara, Villapuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suárez, Villarica, Villarín, Yulago, Yap Artur, Yap Belesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Samora Marjamen, Samora Ronaldo, Sarate, Subiri. We, 217 members, goes to affirmative, see, no negative votes, no abstention. House Bill 6465 is approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on third reading. House Bill number 6513. For this purpose, may I request the Secretary General to be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter to call the roll for nominal voting. Any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of 6513, House Bill 6513. Thereafter, call the roll for nominal voting on third and final reading. House Bill number 6513, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Masao in the municipality of Tungawan, province of Sambuanga, Sibugay. Roll call of members, consideration of House Bill number 6513, Abaya. Abayon, Abillanosa, Abu, Abueg, Acharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba, Adjong, Advincula, Agarau, Agabau, Aglipay Villar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Franz, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Abison, Arcillas, Arenas, Achenza, Aumentado, Bagau, Bagaching, Baguila, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batocabe, Bautista, Bandigan, Bilaro, Belmonte, Pilichano, Belmonte, Jose Christopher, Belmonte, Ricardo, Benites, Bernos, Bertiz, Biason, Billones, Viron, Bulilla, Bundok, Bordado, Bravo, Anthony, Bravo, Meravida, Brosas, Bulot, Begtang, Cagas, Calderón, Calix Rubiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Castro Franz, Castro Pedenil, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Seráfica, Cerilles, Chávez, Chipeco, Co, Cuanco, Collantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Cosalán, Cresólogo, Cuba, Coresma, Cueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Sus, De Venecia, De Vera, De Pensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Loza Montalla, De Maporo, Cali, De Maporo, Duabit, Durano, Di, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Erigel, Ermita Buayn, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ibardone, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer, Ferriol, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Pentebella, Garbin, García, García Albano, 
Garin, Gasataya, Gachalian, Heron, Go, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez, Goreseta, Gullas, Hernandez, Reradi, Hopper, Haloso, Xavier, Kokonghun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lagman, Lanete, Lagan, Lasatin, Liachon, Lilim, Kaichong, Lubigat, Lopez, Loyola, Magpaglaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudadato, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariño, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Miliana, Minding, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles, Nolasco, Nunez, Malanyaon, Maminal, Ocampo, Olivares, Ong, Ortega, Pacquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Opandayan, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Pimisya, Zagabas, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirezato, Ramos, Elampago, Sevilla, Raupuno, Robes, Rocomora, Rodriguez, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salon, Sambar, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento, Sevillano, Semas, Xiao, Silvero, Singson, Suansing, Suarez, Alvarado, Tambuting, Tan, Tejada, Teves, Chanco, Ting, Tiño, Talentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Torabi, Natamanti, Umali, Unavia, Ungab, Unico, Uy, Uybareta, Vargas, Vargas, Alfonso, Velarde, Velasco, Velasco, Capera, Veloso, Vergara, Villapete, Villanueva, Villaraza, Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Biolago, Yap, Yu, Zamora, Sarate, Subiri. With 217 members, affirmative votes, no negative votes, no abstention, House Bill 6513 is approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that all bills approved on third reading be transmitted to the Senate of the Philippines. Any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we proceed with the additional reference of business and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of bills and resolutions on first reading as well as the communications and committee reports. Any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of House bills on additional reference of business and uh, thereafter uh, refer the proper uh, refer the the resolutions and house bills to proper committees. Additional reference of business resolution South Solution 1359, calling on the House to give honor and recognition to medal winners in the PIP Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games, Representative Del Rosario. To the Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Solution 1360, direct the Commission on Audit to provide the House on Committee on Muslim Affairs a report on the utilization of savings of the Commission on Muslim Filipinos, Representative Dimaporo Muhammad Khalid. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1361, direct the appropriate House Committee to assess the budget provided to the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, Representative Muhammad Dimaporo Muhammad Khalid. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1362, direct the Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Finance, Department of Budget and Management, Commission on Audit, to submit their opinion regarding the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, Representative Dimaporo Muhammad Kali. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1363, direct the appropriate committee to review the concession agreement between the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sibirate System and Water Concessionaire, Representative Bosses and Desus. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1364, strongly urging the National Police Commission to effect the immediate conversion, the organization, and or upgrading of the Caloacan City Police Station in the Police District, Representatives Malapitan, Eriza, and several others. To the Committee on Public Order and Safety. House Solution 1365, commending the ACDI Multipurpose Cooperative, Representatives Heron, Bravo, and Kanama. To the Committee on Cooperatives Development. House Solution 1366, commending the Bicton National Federation, Representatives Heron, Bravo, and Kanama. To the Committee on Cooperatives Development. House Solution 137, commending the LAMAC Multipurpose Cooperative, Representative Zeron, Bravo, and Kanama. To the Committee on Cooperative Development. House Solution 1368, commending the San Junisio Community Development Cooperative, Representative Zeron, Bravo, and to Kanama. To the Committee on Cooperative Development. House Solution 1369, commending and expressing gratitude to Anak Mindanao, Representative Congresswoman City, Jalia A. Turabi Nataman, Representative Mending. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1370, Direct the Committee on Agrarian Reform to conduct immediate investigation on the agrarian dispute between farmers and Emerito M. Ramos, Representatives Casillo, Sarate, and several others. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1371, direct the Committee on Agrarian Reform to conduct an inquiry 
on the agrarian dispute between 300 agrarian reform beneficiaries representing Ms. Casillo, Sarat, and several others. The Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1372, direct the Committee on Human Rights to conduct an investigation on the extrajudicial killing of Jason Montalia, representing Ms. Casillo, Sarat, and several others. The Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1373, direct the Committee on Agrarian Reform to conduct an inquiry on the filing of Trump of charge against 25 farmers of Barangay Mawanan Rizal, who said Casilaw, Sarat, and several others. So the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1374, urging the, national con urging the national condemnation of the historical injustice and atrocities under the Howling Wilderness military campaign of Sadibs Casilaw, Sarat, and several others. The Committee on Human Rights. House Solution 1375, congratulating and commending Ms. Kelly Dion J. Camoro, Representative Dalipe. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1376, expressing the sense of the House in support of Ombudsman Conchita Carpi Morales, Representative Slagman, Baguila, and several others. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1377, direct the appropriate committee to conduct an inquiry on the allegation of corruption in the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Representative Alejano. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1378, direct the appropriate committee to conduct an inquiry with regard to the recent encounter between the Philippine Navy and several Vietnamese fishermen, Representative Balejano. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1379, urging President Rodrigo Roa Duterte to allot a budget equivalent to 2% of the country's GDP to effectively increase our country's defense spending, Representative Balejano. To the Committee on National Defense. House Solution 1380, recognizing, commending, expressing our congratulations to our Southeast Asian Games Triathlete participants, Representatives Velasco Catera, Velasco, and Uybareta. To the Committee on Youth, Sports, and Development. House Solution 1381, direct the House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability and Committee on Transportation to investigate the reported irregularities in the public bidding for the LTO procurement of vehicle license plates, Representative Bertis. The Committee on Rules. House Solution 1382, urging the Local Water Utilities Administration to immediately conduct an assessment of the current situation of local water supply, Representative Kasataya. The Committee on Public Works. House Solution 1383, recognizing the exemplary achievement of University of Northern Philippines, Representative Sabiliano. To the Committee on Higher, and Techn Higher Technical Education. House Solution 1384, urging the, urging the public in coordination with the concerned government agencies in preserving and restoring pres presidential houses and houses of heroes, Representative Sabiliano. To the Committee on Basic Education. House Solution 1385, direct the Committee on Energy to conduct an inquiry on the financial condition and viability of the Kamigin Electric Cooperative Beep, Representative Romualdo. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1386, expressing profound condolences to the families of the victims of mass shooting at the Las Vegas Strip, Representative Olivares. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1387, Expressing deepest sympathies and condolences on the demise of the veteran broadcaster Jose Malgapo Taruk Jr., Representative Olivares. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1388, expressing warm felicitations, congratulations to Mr. Man He Lee, Representative Olivares. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1389, expressing deepest sympathies and condolences to the families of the victims of the recent earthquake in central Mexico, Representative Olivares. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1390, expressing the warmest greetings of the House on the occasion of the 62nd birthday of Ka Eduardo V. Manalo, Representative Bunting. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1391, commending Vice Consul Francis Maynard Maleon, Representative Mangodadato Sajid. To the Committee on Foreign Affairs. House Solution 1392, congratulating commending the Filipino athletes who won medals for the Philippines in the recently concluded fifth Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games, Representative Mangudadato Sajid. To the Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Solution 1390, urging the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to adopt currency indicators, Representative Quaresma. To the Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries. House Solution 1394, direct the Committee on Games and Amusement to conduct an inquiry on the procedure of Philippine Amusement Gaming Corporation, Representative Swaminal and Tugna. To the Committee on Rules. Committee Reports, Report Number 425 on House Resolution 654. To the Committee on Rules.
Report number 65, report number 426 on House Bill number 6570. The committee rules. Report number 427, House Bill number 6571. The committee rules. Report number 428 on House Bill number 6572. The committee rules. Report number 429, House Resolution 1397. The committee rules. Report number 430 on House Bill number 3492. The committee rules. The Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the change of referral of the following measures. House Bill number 544 to the Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Bill number 4530 to the Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Bill number 3494 to the Committee on Good Government, on Government Enterprises and Privatization. House Bill number 4793 to the Committee on Population and Family Relations. House Bill number 4870 to the Committee on Population and Family Relations. House Bill number 5923 to the Committees on Higher and Technical Education and Labor and Employment. House Bill number 6287 to the Committee on Higher and Technical Education and Labor and Employment. House Bill number 6205 to the Committee on Labor and Employment. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Any objection? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we adjourn session until tomorrow, Tuesday, October 10, 2018, at 4 o'clock, at 17, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Session is adjourned until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, October 10, 2017.